for like tournament season like feels like it officially kicks off this week and what a way to like to start things off with some great kof action even more importantly it is the uh funny funny number day so i hope everyone who celebrates has a great one for all those who partook but let's go poppy chulo versus rosetti Cool and long Sylvie. Okay, so we got the little ladies on the left hand side, and then uh, Rosetti with what? Shune, Rocky, Ori. Very solid team for both sides. Yeah, I love both team compositions as well. Everybody's in the right place, in my opinion. And some Snowman Oki. Love seeing that Kula players are implementing that a little bit more often. Then Shune stonks have really just came up pretty heavy. If people finally get like a good handle on how to utilize them effectively, helping like a lot of little buffs worked out but then you have like some people laying the blueprint so you see that very very strong offense it's flat rock but poppy chulo being very hard to catch yeah uh i think probably ever since snk world championships i think people saw the strength of this character and are putting a little bit more emphasis into you know putting him onto the team as this looks like poppy chulo finally coming out on top wasn't able to really get any big hit that allowed to start that allowed to start that shunei pressure yeah, exactly. And a lot of it was just being rolled out. No, nothing stopping uh, Poppy Chula from rolling, just to getting out of pressure. But it does set up Rock with three bars and already an early hit until you get tagged with the low B into the spin. And then we're just going to go to the corner. Yeah, great thing about Kula's combos. One of the reasons why she is really good on point is that her combos almost carry full screen from corner to corner. So when you get in the corner, Kula's so good, able to put so much pressure onto you, and doesn't really need to do much. Very un uh, very safe character in this position. Yeah. Yes. Well just, done. The patient wall there. Again, it just adds up. It's not a lot of damage, but it's incremental. It adds up, and she doesn't have to do a lot to get it going, right? A great 2B. So great jump normals, and then just finds the slidey into the DP, and then what do you know? Poppy Chula with a huge lead. Kula looking extra healthy here. Still with the green health. And it's all done at Iori with five bars. Yeah, but that's why you put Iori on the anchor, right? You want him to clean up the game, fix your problems. You can definitely do it with a couple of bars, and especially in this position. Has the ability to finish it off. Just needs to get that right touch, and there it is. All right, one, two, three. No problem, so a, little, very, a little expensive, right? But hey, you gotta spend it on the first date. So Rosebi at least getting on the board, getting something going, Iori can make it a really good comeback here. And still, you know, in the good on the resources part, but with Wong having that like extra range and some great control, we're gonna just see how good uh, Poppy Chula can defend and challenge, like nice hit. We'll confirm here how much we're gonna spend. The one bar to get the knockdown and start out with some good damage. Trying to put pressure there. Guard cancel to get out of the corner. I like it. Trying to reset in a neutral, giving yourself the best position to win, but all nice crouch underneath with the 2B. Fashion throw on hit. I really like that, especially for high light jump normals. All right, that should be an easy finish. Level two. Step on him. That's going to be Poppy Chulo taking a pretty strong first game. Rosepi just having difficulty getting past the cool, losing the point war. Having only one character to deal with, uh, two full life ones, and especially uh, Poppy Chulo maintaining like a good amount of meter and just presence. And it's just so hard that Rosepi hasn't just like done a good enough job like locking it down and finding the hits. <sighs> Yeah, it, so the, the difficulty with playing against Kula is that once she gets ahead of you, it's really difficult to take it back. Uh, having a slew of really strong anti-airs and only needing a, a half bar in order to do your best corner mm -hmm. carry combo uh, really lends to a lot of really good benefits. So that's why you kind of see her on point. Uh, she just gets a lot for very little. Yeah, and then you look at like Shune, who has like all the tools you would want, but like a consistent anti-air i don't think is a big part of it so yes like i think a big thing with shanae is like your evasiveness is going to yeah. be like your key thing if you can use that mobility to avoid getting pressured by kula who can do a good job of just taking advantage of the fact that you know shune is not going to be stuffing air approaches unless you're kind of really reading it with uh short hops and like, full jumps yeah, one of the things that Poppy Chula is doing really well is these uh, low profile 2Bs that Kula and Luong have. Using them very well versus Rosu. There you go. Even with, even with Rosetti having like some chances there, right? Those like little hops around just getting challenged by those low profile and crouch Bs. 
just made a good dent, but at least cool is taking some damage. Oh, but then you just run into the low B. Yeah, one more time in the corner. Oh, rising tackle this time to get out and immediately mashing afterwards. Knew you weren't going to do anything meaty. Okay. Nice. Just go low. No confirm that time, but going to catch the roll. Great presence of mind, even when you don't get the confirm, especially after the chase. And a stun's gonna make it nice and simple. Oh, <laughs> come on. Do you want to build a so snowman, Sammy? <laughs> I'll at least build some meter. Do a DP or something. <laughs> like, don't make me feel like that. We're gonna celebrate, all right? <laughs> and that is Poppy Chulo looking extra good right here. There's no bar, but it's okay. We got just the one Iori. Cool is looking pretty. It gets hit by the advancing strike, so a bit big from it. But at the very least, like, it's getting some momentum here for Rosetti. Yeah, I love how Pocket Chulo constantly is looking for that best spacing for Kula. You can see, like, constantly moving in and out. He's trying to stay away from that cross-up Iori range, which is going to negate a lot of his pressure. All right. Made a read, but unfortunately, Poppy Chulo is a college level text and not letting that happen. Crouch B finds his mark again, and you know, again, that's part of cool and not, not needing more than just half a bar just to get those nice combos going, and this might be it. Yeah, and that will be it. The XTP to finish it off, and Poppy Chulo gonna take it two to zero. Great stuff. Uh, I would, I love watching players like this play it's like the last major patch some time ago you see a lot more players just picking different characters and some more, more being showcased yeah the patches and and put ko15 in an incredible position i think every patch has been fantastic but you really saw it in in the last snk world championship and other tournaments that the variety of characters is out of this world at the point so get into this one iori versus andy a real zoning heavy team on the side of Baserta, which is really interesting you don't see a full team like that normally yeah for sure but it's also like how well can you operate them outside of that full screen range and there you see there Basurto giving up the space and then just putting Sojuro in a comfortable position just to get that full jump, get the hit, get the Iori out of there, and Andy off to a great start. Yeah, it's definitely one of the reasons why you'd want to put Andy up front, just having an extremely strong fireball. And asking all the other characters to get around it can definitely give you this sort of lead. Once you get here, there's not really much you have to do. You can kind of just chill back and ask the opponent to make the mistakes. We'll see and let's see what kind of uh, mistakes Mr. Took can enforce out of here. Well, Chris with the, it's old Chris, right? So you got not the amount, same amount of speed as regular Chris, but you do have like just solid tools here. Gets the light punish. Move into the corner. Gonna use the, the extra DP just to get some more damage, but uh, already looking a little more stable until it gets stuck on the anti air, unfortunately. Oh, reset. Nothing afterwards. Try to chase down. Kind of a scrambly situation, but Baserto comes out on top, able to take it out. Yeah, Chris, the problem with Ochris actually in that situation is that he actually doesn't have a fantastic anti-air. His DP isn't the best as an anti-air because it's kind of slow. So uh, jumping on top of his head is usually a pretty good option versus the character. Yeah, so we we'll see Isla coming up here, and that's going to be the last character. There's a kind of got matching outfits going on here, which I appreciate, <laughs> but uh, right now it is Baserto just unstoppable. And that's going to always get the hard part, like with KOF, right? A lot of players, when you're mm -hmm. dealing with the matchups, is you always can feel like oh, they're always doing the right thing, and that's just that a lot of players, like Baserto, you see, and some others, will always really play with like they're playing preemptively. They're putting, they're sticking stuff out there with the anticipation, expectation. Like that DP was a hard anticipation, didn't work out. Sojiro takes out the Andy, and we're gonna bring in the Joe. Yeah, it's it's very important for you to do that in King of Fighters in general. Reactive play is very strong, don't get me wrong, but you have to play at least a little bit of, with a sense of making reads in front of your opponent in neutral because it, this game is too fast to, to completely play reactive. It's just the nature of it. All right, all oh, runs in, but the reset into the crouch B. Gonna go right into climax, and that's game one. Baserto punching his way up one game. The
Yeah, I got to see a little bit of Joe. Usually you see this character on point, actually, because uh, he quite possibly has the best fireball in the game. And that is obviously really useful up on point. But uh, really, the Andy just gave him so much leeway to kind of do whatever you want. And uh, Basurto actually did one thing that I really also uh, tell a lot of players to do, which is that once you get a lead like that, like almost a full character lead, you don't have to do much. You don't have to take crazy risks. All you have to do is let the time do damage for you. And when you do that, it really negates the ability to make a big comeback when you're not constantly regaining health on characters. So, seems no. like Yori got swapped out, if I remember correctly. Benamaru, yeah. It's going to be the sandwich character here. Is Okris is going to take the lead. And it's a little tough here. I think Okris, one of the more meter-heavy characters, just really necessitating mm -hmm. a lot of level 1s to to at or level twos to really get the damage going because he has one of those combo tools level twos or uh, supers kind of like isla mm -hmm. so we'll see how it fits out it was a little rough with the iori so maybe just it'll work out some there but uh i think just the matchup with andy's just be the tricky part because you you really have to have a certain comfort of getting around like a fireball character in KOF without taking damage like that, where you jump incorrectly and you get punished on landing, or you get you know just you know the classic fireball DP. Yeah, and I think if you want to speak like a, a extremely optimally, I think it's important for a point character to have some sort of strong anti air because when you have less options and less ability to earn offense by you know meter usage or something like that it becomes more difficult to play offense correctly and i think like you're just kind of seeing it here but Serta didn't really hit a combo it was all just pokes and stuff and because go chris doesn't have as strong neutral as andy it was just so difficult to get anything started yeah and it's like you look at old chris and i think that's one of probably the, one of the glaring issues that's not like you said the ants here but like he has no like fireball skip he doesn't have just yeah. one answer to say, hey, your fireballs are relevant. I have a little bit of meter or something to be worried about. No, it's just like a surgeon could just be weaving in and out like they're doing now. And again, there's not been any real response to it. We haven't seen a DP yet from Benamaru or even like an attempt at an air throw. So uh, Sojourn is going to have to pick up the pace some. Yeah, really struggling with just all of the jumps. Think that. Sojuro kind of figuring it out a little bit here. We saw finally uh, a far D for an anti-air, a DP as well. Finally gets a big hit here, and we're going to spend money to confirm it. Okay. But the follow-up is immediate rollout. It's going to be the jump in after the roll out of the corner, and Baserto just, again, just challenging, saying, let's see how prepared you are. I am not here to block. I am here to escape and then make my move and take my turn back. Yeah, really making it difficult to adjust spacing, but sort of constantly moving around, making it difficult to understand what the next approach is. We see taking a more defensive approach this time, actually, versus Isla. All right, so some offense from Sojuro. Let's see what they do here. It's been mostly just a bunch of air pokes at each other, little by little. I mean, Isla having some of the best mobility in the game, especially airborne. Tries to roll, gets punished though, but Serto with a chance to cash out some huge damage here with Andy. Yeah, really looking for that thing that starts Isla's game plan, a hit that lets you really start the mix ups, but just kind of force it in, finally got that hit. And Isla can make the comeback. One of the, the reason why she was so valued as a character, I guess still valued as a character, is that she doesn't need a lot of meter to really do damage. She doesn't need a lot of meter to run her mix-up game. She can take it with a single hit. She can really run your whole team over. And we got a hit. A little bit of a freeze frame to see if we can land this combo on Sojuro's side. The timing, I think, probably the worst, but hey, Sojuro's gonna complete it. Use the X dive, gets to level one, get the knockdown too, and just make sure we're just keeping the pressure. Finally punishes the rollout. Puts him out of the corner still. Which is plenty of leeway for Joe, but the punish on oh, not quite. Yeah, back rolling, trying to get away from the offense here. 
Jesse. Love the spacing. It feels like it's a way more comfortable on Sojiro. I'm going to max mode confirm this one. Make sure we clean it up and give ourselves the best chance to take it. We are going to the final rounds. Very nice. He's going to get a good chunk of health back. I mean, a lot of meter spent, but it's worth it, right? It's Hydra with five bars, so this is kind of like the nightmare anchor that you would have to kind of deal with. This guy with bar has some of the best tools using meter. The level one pinwheel combos are actually ridiculous. Like his max mobs don't do a lot of damage, right? But just like any light confirmed. Here we go. Sayonara. Yeah, very easy confirm. Gonna go nice and simple. Level two, level three. On, on almost every character in the game, close heavy starter into level two level three after max mode kind of does like 700 plus mm -hmm. so uh, very easy for you to understand like okay once i get to this point four bar max mode confirm easy peasy okay violent king versus shadow x would be a heavy match to move into this so i'm excited to see how this does i mean alucard sun representing canada the br i mean i think that's i mean that's either brazil or battle royale but you know either way yeah, but uh, showing off the Yashiro on points. Really this was a character that had like the stocks were going through the yeah. roof at SNK World Championships. Everyone reminding like just how solid he is, how hard he hits. His buttons are really amazing. And it's a day, no matter what SNK has done, ups and downs, he's probably had the biggest, one of the biggest roller coasters of a character in this game, but he is just always a good choice. Yeah, he's been, I think he's been very good in this game. And it, ever since they gave him the change uh, in the last patch, making his Oki way more consistent. So uh, very, very strong on points. Uh, you can spend as much meter as you want on him. If you want the kill, if you just want Oki, if you just want a little bit of damage, it's totally up to you. And definitely that far B, one of the best space controlling tools in the game. But nice confirm from Violent Kane. See if he wants to spend extra on it. No, no meter at the end. Oh, what a block. The first real DP coming from either player, but Violet Kane just sniffed it out. And I love that. That's, that's like a, the inherent risk. I mean, wake up uppercuts in KOF are uh, honestly one of, her, the, one of the fighting games that it's a lot rarer in. See if Hydrant can clean this up. Definitely doesn't want to spend too much. Stinger almost goes awry, but recovers just in time. I like both players so far. Ooh, what's the saying? Oh, no! doesn't get to cancel, never mind. Doesn't get to finish either. This is, okay, okay, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay, Sammy. We're, we're fine, we're, we're evening out. Spaghetti all around, but spaghetti from both sides. I think everything is balanced once again. All things considered, Violent Kane's slightly up on the meter, but not too bad. Not anything Alucard can't deal with, especially with the Hydra and having these really long buttons that Iori is going to have to get around, but gets the first big confirm here. All right, and it's gonna set up the hard knockdown. It's time for the safe jump because yeah, we're respecting the fact that Violent Kane's gonna have the cross cuts. Jump B crossover, there we go, Alan card son. That's the big thing, right? Um, Hydern's level one uh, into, or his level one super into Stormbringer against a hard knockdown. Sets up not only a mix up, but a safe jump against characters like Iori and players like Violent Kane that are ready to kind of just get those like ill-timed jumps with a good DP on either side. Now we switch to Rio. Talk about a character that controls space so well, but this character, on top of which, punishes you for your bad decisions so well, so incredibly hard. Oh, oh. speaking about decisions, do we have this? No, it doesn't get this other side. And then there's the cross cut. Yeah, you cannot just jump over Violent Kane. Oh, is that he enough? Sucks. Ah, of course it is for Rio. <laughs> My man Super is just the big punch. Nothing fancy, he just swings. That's one of one of the GOAT Supers, honestly. All right, so we got the other Yashiro here on the side of Alucard Sun. That's the O Yashiro. And like a Hyder, known for just getting this damage, getting the knockdown, oh. but dropping it into the max ball, but still has quick max. Level one. All right, gonna clean it up towards the end there. Yeah, level one. Could have level two to kill, but it's okay. <laughs> or one does it anyway. Either way. Keep it simple. All right, let them know really quick. Yeah, that could have been a could have been a very scary situation as after Max Mode went awry. But Alcar cleans it up, takes the first game over Violent Chain. Sounds super solid. I mean, Alcar's game plan has been, was straightforward, using the character's strengths effectively, but also recognizing his opponent's 
uh, strengths and not overextending against them to give up mm -hmm. their pressure, which, like I said, just that, that one instance of like the Hydern hard knockdown into a safe jump just shows me like the kind of awareness of that Alucard has in the player versus player matchup. Ready? Yeah, I, I think if you're Violent Kane, you tell yourself that as long as I don't get like mixed by Hydrant like that, the game is way easier on me, right? So you don't have to adjust too much on your side. Don't feel too bad about what happened because you were very close. And get into this one, Alucard starting off strong again. Nice meaty 2B, a little combo towards the end there. Doesn't want to spend meter on it just yet, but has now shoved Violent Kane in the corner. You see, yes, yeah, Sammy, I mean, just the, the amount of confidence that Alucard Sun's playing out with. That's like probably the, mo the most notable thing I'm thinking, especially in game number two, is just fully committing to what they believe in and willing to challenge. Oh, EXCP. Not all of the hits hit, so not a lot of damage there, but just the get off me, re-control space again. I've been forcing Violet Kane to be a little bit more passive. Oh, but the, the brawl ends with Violent Kane standing up top as far C's were exchanged and uh, it's getting, getting a little dirty out here. Yeah, par for the course. We'll see if Alucard can match again, try to get rid of this Kyo as soon as possible. Does have the meter to do it too. Toss him some fireballs. <laughs> the thing we were saying before is maybe the weakest part of this kit, but still a fireball. Okay, like? get the grab. I like it. Stormbringer! <laughs> it was actually perfect because between the Stormbringer and finishing after 42 seconds, he gets all of his health back. Yep. Or, <laughs> so, perfectly executed from Alucard there. Actually has the meter lead this time going into this third round. It's dangerous territory here. Nice, using it to roll away. Gets the close D. It's max damage. Spin the Wheel of Fortune. And hard knockdown into another safe jump. So much oh. damage into the mix. Ooh, the crosscut DP too. Wow. Alucard Sunset, okay. I safe jumped last time. There's no way they're gonna be ready for the crosscut. Eh -eh. Air to air once again. Nice anti-air from Violent Kane. Not leading to anything big though. One more hit, especially with the meter on either side. Okay, some big blocks. Ooh, Alucard Sun being careful here. Yeah. Whoa, once again, all the EX Moon Slasher and the 2C. Gotta clean it up. I think Kane woke up with the anti fireball tool, the EX, to skip forward. I'm just spending a little bit of bar and like it's potentially frustration with the read, but right now, Rio has to get rid of Hyder and ASAP. Oh, EX Moon Slasher again. Oh, going for the light normal, mixing up even the amount of damage or the amount of blocks to up putting the opponent into. Oh, missed the double DP. <laughs> You're just gonna do it again. Oh, you think it's your turn? Nah. <gasps> oh no, gets hit though. Oh, big damage. One more jump, please. Save jump, please. Respect him. Nope. <laughs> nope. You know what's funny too? Is that. Uh, they both have the same life right now. <laughs> Look! The they both have the same life. Oh, who'd have thought? <laughs> they Rio both die in one touch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Al Alucard has to be careful here. A heavy hit from Rio will finish the job. Oh my god, what a wake up. The bravery. That's it! Oh, nice. I love it. Just make it easy as, make it as, easy as possible for yourself with the max mode. I'm gonna clean it up. Alucard taking it two to zero over Violent Kane. Wow, okay. Alucard's son really being the 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 pocket pick. The character the player who's like in the cut that I mean at first glance I would have been like, I wonder what this guy has in store for us, but holy crap, his bag of tricks is huge. Solid gameplay, a lot of confidence, confirms we're on deck. Adds one more character to it, but for the most part, this has been the squad he's been playing at the highest competitive level. As we get into this one, starting off with the Isla versus Hydra. Immediate, just getting a trade, hitting the Moon Slash. Oh, second hit. Oh, fun to wake up throw. Uh, but Sergio being able to just get more pressure. And now we're just kind of, both players just try to pace each other. Back into the corner though. Yurikov, understanding. 
this really strong position, not overextending too much. Gets a nice hit here, gonna double EX. Not quite, gonna need one more. Nice block on the instant overhead too. Great presence of mind, but it's not enough. Here he caught able to take the first round. Yeah, gonna probably make quick work early on and get the momentum here, but let's see what Ant can do. We got the two bars at least, but like, what kind of hit can you get on this character? Oh no! I don't mind that DP, honestly, as a risk, with Yurikov only having half a bar, but does go awry, does lose already 50, 60, 70% of his health. It is going all Yurikov. Yeah, I mean, this is just going to be quick. No problems here. It's like Maserto is just... Only damage has really just been from the DPs, as Yurikov is just... You know, they, they, they play, like, there is nothing, you have to derail them, is the only way. Like, Yurikov, he is just, like, full steam ahead. He's going to do what he wants to do, and he has this very, like, he's very committed to his play style. And the source war right now is not shown that he can be the, the speed bump. Although, here's a hit at least. It's a big jump in. See what he wants to do with this one. With all this meter, does he want to go for the kill? Yes. We're going to, we're going to invest. Ba, ba, ba. One more? I think it's gonna be a little short. No, just enough. You gotta remember, no matter what life you have, you you're one hit away from losing that character when the the, the giant walking thumb just comes through. <laughs> and what's great about it is that even though you spent all of that meter, you're still like an incredibly fundamentally sound character now, right? Like you don't have, you're not too worried. This is great confirmed. This is going to do a lot of damage, build a lot of meter back because of the double DP. Advanced strike not working out, but still leaving you a plus. All right. Jump in, punish. I mean, that's Mightenkun getting basically the, the first, like, uh, you know, uh, wake up. The, I forget the name of the move, right? But the, the, your, deep, your flash kick that he has got stuffed out. And then it was two big whiff punishes that just Basuto just managed to capitalize on and it's gonna be the Benamaru who it's a uh, you, you're comfortable with five bar here but it's still Rio he still just craps out a huge damage that's true right you you are one or two guesses away but we're gonna maximum confirm we're gonna spend three bars on this yeah not gonna kill from that position anyway so just commit three bars to it because the next one's gonna kill and it's gonna open it up with the EX command grab boom and that's going to be first game going to Yurikov. Thought it was all Yurikov, but uh, Berserzo pulling it back with the really strong Ryo pressure. Absolutely. But yeah, Ryo Sagazaki, just a tide turner, is having that capability of just making you think like, oh, please, please stop. Please stop just like <laughs> swinging. Like this man's got tree trunks for arms and it just feels like it whenever he gets a clean hit. But character select is going to be where we're going. Might switch up the order. Hydran didn't really cut the mustard to start things off, so we're going to run Andy first. Yeah, Andy first, the uh, thing that we saw from Baserto in the first game we saw him on stream, uh, and then Rio second, Hydran third. So uh, more similar order to the previous version, but swapping Rio and Joe. Obviously, Rio did a lot of work in that position uh, as anchor with all of that meter, but maybe if we can play this first matchup a little bit better, maybe a little bit more comfortable with Andy on point that uh, we don't have to ask Rio to make that big comeback. All right, let's see, although Andy already kind of a tough spot, not gonna have the buttons to really kind of keep Isla on lockdown. The jumpins I think will be a big part of it, but if uh, Yurikov just kind of catches those crouch Cs, no problem. Oh, the cross up though. Gonna use a bar for that. Yeah, very nice. Backs up afterwards even. Just letting the fireballs do the dirty work. Nice. It's a big hit and a big finish here. Is yeah, Yurikov does so much damage off that one EX there. Just managed to find just you know, you you were never safe standing still against this character. You still just got so many good ways of opening you up. And now it's gonna be the Rio again. Do I gonna have like the five bars? Oh my god. Whoa. <laughs> like you finally blocked the second hit. Good. Good to hold this DP. Yeah, and this was kind of Basurto's undoing in that other game. Just being in the corner, but Rio, big guess on that DP. Gets out of the corner. Why are finding the hits? Damage adding up little by little here. One more touch from Rio. Get rid of uh, 
He's so safe oh. side, but not fast enough for the confirms. Okay. Oh, bad at all on the run up DP, thinking he was going to try to intercept. But Berserker stays calm, ties it up. Yo, stop pressing buttons, bro. No, he actually stopped. He he did what you expected him to do. I was like, all right, you got it, bro. But let's see. Let's see if Mighty Kun can actually do something this time. Last game, he was just not a non factor, which is rare to say. Here he comes, the premier North American uh, Mighty Kun. Yeah, surprisingly, got a lot of jumps in versus Mighty Kun. Quite surprising. So. See if Yurikov adjusts the gameplay or if he's gonna get blown up once again by this four bar Rio. Right. Nice, nice. Eight -door double! Let's go, Rio! Power, but doesn't get the follow up, it's okay. Yeah, still good damage from essentially an anti air. Oh, just a little bit too far! That sucks so much! Get oh. out of here. And that's Yurikov saying, I, I hate this character. I want to jump around. I want to play. I want to be able to put on offense. Rio just makes denies that right. So let's just get him out of the picture. Unfortunate. Oh. Yeah, that is the right idea. Just the spacing a little bit too far away from the corner to fully confirm. It hurts, but we do have the character to clean up the mess. No, <laughs> the character is trapped in this box, and he is not being let out anytime soon. I picked one more throw. And a third one to finish. Okay, it would have been a throw if it wasn't a jump, but there you go. Well done, <laughs> Yurikov. The number one grabber in North America. <laughs> Throws are pretty good in this game. Throws are pretty good in this game. And, we yeah. wish he was better. But then he'll do something huge and do huge damage, and you'll be still like, well, that was cool, but dang, it's still, it ain't easy out here in the Halmaru streets. So, funnily enough, he's kind of like... He, he's he's the like the Ryu of his game, but he's kind of a weirdo character in this game. Like he he's kind of plays very differently from everybody else. Speaking so we'll see how that plays out. Yeah, weirdos indeed. Ovi Paula Paula, one of the fastest characters in the game. Big damage, great tools. She has probably some of the probably the, mo the most amount of tools in the game from like various just like strings to having like a weird fireball having a bunch of like specials that just uh kind of like neutral jump scares with your like totsugeki and other things it's very very fun to watch but then when you deal with it and then all of a sudden your life just disappears and you're like why is this like high mobility goofy character just hurt, hurt so much yeah one of the one of the best characters in the game right now undoubtedly just super duper strong but she does have to get in on you so maybe how is range here Giving uh, Levon a little bit of a difficulty here. Yeah, at the very least, I mean, you still got the K dash out. Gets to jump, but it's hard. There's no cancelable far buttons for Sylvia outside of her far CD. Nice block on the cross up as well. Don't expect it when they're trying to steal the corner. Oh, oh no! Okay. Yeah, I can go for an easy confirm there. And all things considered, pretty good position for Miguel. I mean, yeah, that's a good way to finish off Sylvie. Slice her in half. Maybe if you hit her hard enough next time, she won't be able to show up in the next in the next round. Not, not quite Sam Show rules here. Now you get another high mobility monster with the uh, the Isla here. As you know, just Mr. Mr. Hardworking Man over here. Hardworking Samurai. Too far no! for the confirm, sadly. It was back turn too, so it's kind of weird. Yeah, really scrambly situation there. Pretty much resetting to neutral, almost back where we started. All right, it's just uh, both players just kind of gaping their space. Gets the escape. Miguel off at a pretty solid spot here. Has a meter to make a huge dent, but gets caught rolling. Yeah, first big commitment to a defensive option there. Gets eaten up by Levon. Oh no! Oh, no! And no quick roll. Does it get to punish? Well, you gotta be pressing that A and B at all times. You never know when your opponents can drop a combo when you can roll out and get that punish and turn the tides. Yeah, really led to basically one decision there towards the end. A lot of like jockeying and neutral, little hits, anti air, stuff like that, but Isla comes out on top. For Miguel here, just the Hydran left. Does have four bars, so definitely can clean this one up and still be healthy for the next round. See if he gets the opportunity to do so, though. Starts off with the X Moon Slasher. 
now, just building the fort. Oh, jumps into the corner. But guess that, yeah, the cross chop. What a good jump. That jump and jumps the, the, the Hydern family jump C. <laughs> Absolutely stellar button. Uh, many a games, it's been a it's been a, a nightmare, and this one's no different. Did we get the salute whip on anchor. Not, oh, usually where you see her, you usually see her point in second because she controls space very well. But if you're a whip specialist, you, you maybe want to bet on her being your anchor. I like it in a matchup like this though, right? You're, oh no, until you whip an uppercut. Although we're just going for. Uh the stinger into just a reset hit, not wanting to commit to the hard knockdown. Big so, cross uh, Let's See how much we want to spend on this, just the level one. Yeah, the next hit's gonna kill if we can get a nice one, especially with max mode. There you go. Nice. We're gonna make it pretty simple here, level two. Well done there as, uh, you know, Miguel gave Leanne Van the reset chance to, to play the game. And Leanne Van took that and ran with it very, very hard as that like confidence came through with the whip. Yeah, unfortunate, right? Because that's the exact hit that you want uh, as Hydran, because it starts your Oki, it starts your, it starts the mix-up pressure. Uh, you know, it gets the ball rolling, and uh, you know, especially versus a character like Whip that controls the neutral very well, losing out on being able to put her on her butt really hurts. But <laughs> first game. Goes to Leavon. Honestly, if I were to fix anything, if I was Miguel, basically just ask the K Dash to do a little bit more work. Would have been yeah, this, this character is cool and nonchalant, but buddy, you gotta clock in, right? He is a relatively hard character to play. I think he's super good. Like, I think he's one of the better characters in the game. But uh, does take a lot of of understanding what the opponent wants to do in order to access his strong tools. Okay, starting to get a little bit of less lead at the very least. In this quick compact combos. We're not doing anything big or huge, but we're just finding them and making it count. So at the very least, K Dash is uh, pulling the weight that you wanted it to. Yeah, feeling really strong and neutral here. So actually, even committed to the guard cancel on point, which is not something you see all that often, but definitely uh, a testament to how Miguel was feeling in this first round here. Let's see what we do here, Miguel. Finally, with an elite in the match here, and now able to kind of just flex a bit of the K with the meter they have, but the whiff on the minute spike gonna get punished out there. To be no problem to really just finish the job here. The ambit doesn't do much, but finds the jump CD, and uh, it's gonna be able to deal with the next character with a full health uh, Isla. Yeah, still a better position than they were before. Obviously, two bars on top of which gonna be a, a nice little boon on the side of Miguel but for Helmar specifically Ooh. if you can get those Farsi confirms into super it can add a little bit of extra risk to everything that Isla wants to do but Isla starting off strong here Leovon with a lot of pressure overhead actually Ooh. it's gonna be hella escape but we take the damage all right ah uh. yeah spends money on that one towards the end there Pretty much ties it up. Oh, gets confirmed. Get a little more mixed. Nah, yeah, you cannot. Tough part to press, right? You get hit and you think it's your time to just start mashing, but it's still like a slight advantage for Isla there and the close C connects. Yeah, and a lot of, in, in almost every situation, rising moves are usually negative on hit, if not punishable. But uh, maybe in that case, Miguel not getting the button out in time. But EX Moose Slasher. And now just simple, safe pressure with Isla. Find that one hit, you can spend the one bar, get the co corner combo, and now just maintain all this room just to be tricky, be hard to control. Yeah, just making it really difficult to make a read on what Leovon wants to do here. Oh, the fireball, I don't know if you wanted that. Oh, no confirm either on the two A's. And that one's gonna hurt as Leovon able to take that one off Miguel and move on to the top eight. Yeah, well done. Full control. As always, that's going to be this the staple of it. How well can you control your opponent in KOF here? How well can you control the crazy for Leanne Vaughn? Really prepared for because a lot of little interesting, not just play style, but character choices. Went back to the Blue Mary. 
So that was the other staple of his team. So it's going to have that in the middle with Might and Kun as the anchor. Also an extremely strong character. Maybe a little bit underplayed than the rest of the what we call like top best characters. But super duper good. Thanks for not using the word meta. I don't want to get sued by Facebook. <laughs> I literally never thought about that. That's so funny. <laughs> All right, Shadow uh, X no. with the lead here in terms of pressure with the corner, but the rollback into the throw. It's actually going to give Yurikov all that lead back and look at this health differential. Not bad. Nice response there with the two C's, but just gonna float. See the patience on Shadow, understanding Isla's strength at that range. Rolls away. He's not been able to pin down Yurikov. He's just been really patient, taking their time. Another three two three. Here, but the throw is gonna start things off. Oof, all right. Just light DP. Pressure. Oh, it hit, it hit like late? Am I crazy? I feel like it hit like on the upper end of the deep. I mean, it's just 3 DP. It's slow as heck, right? It, it is. So, it like, is the fact slower. that, like, your safe jump was maybe too safe, and you're like, oh, they did an uppercut <laughs> because of the timing, and then the instant you let go, it's the worst feeling. But the Carcanator, the big man. The, the, the muscular grappler here from the Akari Warriors, who has just been a treat to watch for Shadow X every time. Pulls yeah, I love seeing him on anchor, or sorry, lo love seeing him on second as well, because you get unlimited stocks in this, right? Anywhere juggle from the air, from Clark's fantastic air buttons. Didn't get it that time. Yurikov busts out with the FCP. One more time? Yes! And neutral jump D just catching your cup, oh. trying to hop forward, and your cup's like, how do I approach? Oh, oh we oh. just dodging grabs like that. You can't dodge that one. Oh, great minds think alike. Both they said, oh, gets thrown off of the uh, max mode on block. Yurikov drops a combo, but lets that quick max time out. What a block on the overhead wins. You don't expect an overhead from Clark too much, but you also don't ex I wasn't expecting Chad Wicks to go all in on that. So a lot of meter gone, but still has plenty for the EX tackles. If he can get another air hit. There it is. Oh. No, just take the air grab, save the bar. Yeah, went a little bit tricky on there. Maybe didn't confirm it, but one way or another, Shadow was able to take out the Blue Mary. Goes to Yuri Kov's anchor sitting on the Mike and Coon. Right, tackle again. Yep, you want this character to have to hold this pressure. Nice run up block, even. Yurikov went all in on the reversal. It's gonna hurt. Yeah, gonna spend money on this too. Now it's up to Shadow to actually get past that 42 second mark. Make this damage stick better than it normally would. But no bar on the side of Shadow. It's tough. Definitely... Oh, there you go. It's not tough. You wait for the jump. It's KOF. Someone's gonna be jumping, all right? Just got the time on the 42 second mark. If you didn't know, 42 seconds is the time where you get the most health back. You get 300 health back after 42 or before 42 seconds. So best position for Yurikov to put himself in in this last one. But we're going against Shadow Ziori. A little bit of hit though. Although, wow, what a counter and confirm. Extra credit with OTG. And now you, Yurikov is on their last legs. Oh, the read, the anticipation. Very nice. A tool you don't get to see all that often, but super duper good against fireball characters because not only is it a great guess against fireballs because fireball projectable, projectile invincibility, but also plus on block. So even if you guess wrong, as long as you're not whiffing it, uh, you do get to continue your pressure. Just crazy. Recognize like this is the one pillow you're going to throw. I feel it right now. It is it is in the back of Yurikov's mind. Like he's inputting the motion as as Iori's just flying at him and he's he can't stop pressing the button. Yeah, it's like 20 plus <laughs> frames, by the way. It has to be a read. You do not get to do that as a as a reaction punish. So great, great stuff. Shout out Exit will take the first one here. This was yeah. a really interesting bout in the first game here. I'm gonna interested to see how this changes in our second game. Oh my god. Already getting the, the, the hits off those air minute spikes. So this is just okay. Chat X getting punished though. You want too many overheads. You kinda have to do it. You kinda have to see where your opponent's mentality is after getting hit by three of those, you know? So I, I get it. I get it. 
I gotta love it. And Yurikawa's into in throw mode. Getting him to confirm off of that good close hit and just has turned us all the way around. Yeah, and Yurikov's actually had a really good nose for those DPs in the corner to to bust out of the pressure that he's been putting on to his opponents. And now we're gonna ask Clark to do a little bit more than last game, but it is Clark. That's one. Nice. Oh, all right, jump back that time. We'll say the best thing to do on Clark if you feel like this character's offense is, is really running you over, you do have to stay active versus him. Gotta mix up your defensive options mm -hmm. quite a bit. Oh, nice. It's a cross-up, though. Doesn't oh. get anything more from it, but it's just a roll as extra credit. Your call is starting to run away with this, and that's great for the faction. I mean, Clark is explosive, sure, but this character is like, his one reversal is going to be the Frankensteiner, it's still a hard commitment. He's got no, like, real, real DP, anything of that nature. But does get the Frankensteiner, I don't have to kill for that one. Yeah, cleans it up. Definitely still like that that behind position that Shadow doesn't want to be in, but this character loops his offense so well. You do really just need that one or two hits to really get going. Let's see if we get some moment. Shake my hand. Gonna spend it on the max mode too. Running Listen, three. Level, ah. mm, I, I wish it was level two, but running three. I want to see that man just haul no, fast across right. this game. I don't see that enough. I feel you. I feel you. Quick 600 damage for the big boy. Run up to be max mode. I do not want to deal with this character anymore. Please get him out of here. Thank you. So she brought the taser. I'm done with it. <laughs> get out of my you. personal space. Chill out. Oh, it always makes me laugh. You know, as a kid, I definitely thought that she just did electricity hands. I know. I wish it was just a case where she was just like, yeah, I, I, I shock you in just this one attack. But no, she just... <laughs> that's a taser. She's equipped. <laughs> She would use the pepper spray too, but that's been banned from King of Fighters tournaments. <laughs> yeah, King of Fighters, Southtown Geneva doesn't allow it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> All right, knock, knock. Iori Agami's here. We got 80 inches of Iori. Shout out to that one statue I saw before this tournament that's literally the life size Iori Yagami. Oh, shout out to the 2B Max mode confirms on the point for Yurikov. Gonna anywhere juggle here. Sets up really nice Oki. I said, no thank you, Oki. EXDP gets out of there. And folks, it is not over yet. This is Shadow X with Iori. I just love it. It's literally like, if I'm gonna die, I'm dying on my own terms. Here's the EXDP and just says, all right. Can you believe that the character is two combos away from killing you right now? Mm, I believe it. This is this. That's the world that we live in. Yori is uh, why he's one of more the valued anchor characters. That's one. No! That's one. How much expanding? I gotta use all of this here. You have a bar too for a super. No reset. reset. Oh my God! Has the bar? Jeez. Ex scum Gale to clean it up and Shadow pulls it back with the Yori. 2-0 on here. there, on the screen again, showing off the whip on point here versus Robert. All right, Robert, finally get to see them on stream here with the Shunei Benamaro Iso. So there's another, like, team crafted in the lab to be successful. As Robert is one to not pull punches. Always kind of picking what is solid. What not just fits his play style, but what, like, has, you know, good track record. So that's a good team. Yeah, really like seeing the Shunei on point. The, the stocks, again, you're saying for, like, for uh, Yashiro Rising. I think Shine as well had a really good SNK World Championship. So, see if we can get to see some Shine stuff going on. Leovon's trying his best to prevent any of that nonsense from happening. Yeah, you know, power whip. Just full control, great normals, and then just overall, you know, getting the hit confirms. And it's not like it's like a big mix up or anything, these are just mids. But sometimes that onslaught of mids will confirm and let Leonvon getting a good start here. Gonna have to ask. Oh! <laughs> All right. I would have kept running. Maybe Benamaru yeah. ben ben could escape this box. That's called training mode. Nice. Love seeing the control here. Leovon, right when the first Robert jump came out, 
Got the anti-air. Very, very powerful. He gets a big jump in there. Level two, even. Making sure we clean up the whip. Get her out of here. And before 42 seconds. You mentioned that the perfect time to get that health back. So Aubrey making it quick and easy. Full life and uh, pretty even as we go into our second characters on both sides. Oh, no, thank you. I don't want to be in the corner versus this character. No, you don't have the yeah, much choice in that matter for Robert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, getting shoved back into there. Little buttons just controlling the space in front. Ooh, far D. Too far for a punish on the Shatter Strike, but a oh! DP level two. Oh my god, Leon Vaughn, you, you wild for that one. You spent it because you just knew. You just felt it. We're feeling it back and forth, playing strong and loose. EX Command Grab. Whoever felt it, dealt it. Uh, uh, Robert dealing it right back at you. Will and to spend the juice to make sure the characters are done and dusted. Leavon now put on the anchor character. Sylvie with two bars, though. Easy cleanup if they can find the moment. I run up. It's like, yeah, she doesn't have the best normals when she's playing that mid range, but. She can get up close and personal so fast, it's frightening. Yeah, between her great air buttons and her fantastic run speed, the the stubby normals don't feel like too much of an issue for this character. But it's definitely the thing to consider the most when you're playing against her. Ooh, push! And it's the cross-up. Nice for Robert to just turn that one weird hit into a opportunity. Wake up throw. Oh, I should be good. Yeah, and then gonna confirm with the Cooper. Robert pulling it back three straight with the Benimaru. Yeah, it looks like a overextensions on the end side. Just really running, running a little too hot, and uh, using that speed to a disadvantage actually, because that Robert's just like, hey, cool, I can stop. You know, put that little the speed bump, put that little thing on the ground that you'll trip over, and I'll just mm -hmm. take advantage of it. If you're just gonna keep trying to just run in my face. Definitely the, the type of games that make you feel really good because you pretty much didn't get much from Shane, but you got so much from Benny Maru. It gives you the confidence to be like, whatever happens, I can always make the comeback. I always have the characters, the decision making in order to make it happen. So we see Leovon actually ended up switching the team order, putting Sylvie on point, which I believe is what we saw him play the first time around. Definitely another thing that you were talking about before, the strength to be able to put your characters in different positions, having that already labbed out, ready to go for matchup purposes. And just, yeah, Robert's comfy. I mean, getting that first game always is a little bit of confidence here as now Shanae is finally getting a pop, chance to pop off. And that Sylvie's just uh, deal, dealing with the problem. And we finally get to see a Shanae round on stream, and that's what it can look like. It can look like an absolute nightmare. Just so tough to make the right decision versus this character once he gets the ball rolling. And uh, we can say the same for Isla, see if they get the opportunity. And it's, it's, it's still a little rough. I think Leanvav's kind of like at a loss. Looking right now, it's just having a tough time. Like, how do I approach? When can I press? How do I nooch? And this so far it's just not found a solid answer. So it feels like they're flailing a little bit. Let's see if they can get their bear. This should help a little bit. You gonna get into the level one. What's the mix up afterwards? Knockdown. Cross up. A little bit too high to get a combo. But still in a good position. One more time. Before we spend it? No, just not even gonna need it. Great stuff though. Levon finally anchoring their gameplay, getting a hit, getting some good Oki, get some health back on the Isla as well. But now we got to deal with the problem. Oh, oh no! Running away, there's no escape here. You are trapped in this box. And Metamaru is going to finish the job with that level. That level two. That, the climax, sorry. That's just. It's not, it's not very ceremonious. <laughs> the man just fixes his hair and then just pumps you full of 200 million volts. But this is, this is not as this is one of the leads of all time right now. Is Robert's just in control. Yeah, just love him just spending it on the level three. Just get him out of there because the lead here with the character, the health, is going to be the most important thing. 
Now Robert trying to cage Leovon's whip into the corner here. But another good opening getting out of the corner. Let's see Oki here. Oh, tried to meet him with an air throw, actually. Didn't get it. Okay, let's see. He gets a hit. Nicely done. Whip is that's back in the driver's seat, but I mean, you need a lot out here, right? Yeah, you have one character to deal with on Robert's side. You don't have much resources, but you have a chance, and that's all you need. Yeah, it's going to feel good just to get the, the Benny Mara out of here. And if you can get past this, it's going to feel even better. Give you a lot of confidence in that third game. If you get the opportunity, this is a good start, though. All right, nice. Get the knockdown there. Has to be careful. Overhead connects. Punishes the rollout with a quick confirm. Level one doesn't get the OTG, but it's okay. Yeah, scary situation though. The three and a half bars means anything. We'll do it. Just needs to find the opportunity, and that is going to be it. We're gonna level two to make it nice and simple. You know, the character definitely needed EX ground bounce. <laughs> when you think you're safe and fine, though, EX flip comes out, and you're just like, well, that happened. And that's not often you see that side. Gonna go up against Miguel off here, who also qualified. So we got uh, Violent King with the Geese Rock Rio. Right. The Geese is a little bit fresher here, but it went one of the best point characters right now. Great, quick, light buttons. Everything everything leads to a combo. Palm is safe off, like safe specials that can be, uh, are uh, gapless off lights and just great, great buttons. Everything's good on Geese. Yeah, I. I... You know, talking about like how I thought Isla didn't look as good in SNK World Championship, I thought Geese looked better than we thought he was at that tournament. And uh, I genuinely think he's like the best character in the game now because just the immense space control this character has. Every button is best in class. I cannot <laughs> think of a character. Uh, I can't think of a button that this character has that's not like a top five button. It's just this character is so, so, so strong. I, I, everything you can hope for. It's like, yeah, you don't got a couple of different things, but just like momentum is key there and the damage is even better gets the otg stand up stay down like go off i had to deal with the hell morrow against geese hatward yeah starting off strong showing off why this character is so good but this character Hellmaru, does have some really good range so might be able to contest geese can't say i've seen this matchup more than once <laughs> <laughs> You know, oh, I mean, I'm here to learn a little bit. I like that, setting the Rapukin right back at him. Oh, I did expect a fireball. I like this. This is interesting. Miguel off is in, 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 in control here. We can't even yeah. maintain it. Uh -oh. I really like how Miguel really focuses on the neutral first and foremost. You know, using Palomaro's great range in order to, to really enforce his game plan. All right. Keeping it simple and safe. Getting the damage little by little here. Miguel has to finish the job though. EX counter, no good, but the low, no palm. Oh, no punish on the slide. Oh, tried to punish the Shibukin. A little bit too fast, actually. Oh, speaking of slide, just enough. Okay, Miguel off, taking out Geese Howard. However, a little worse for wear though. That's tough, right? It's. I think it's hard to make a quick round playing as yeah. Halmaru, unless you get like that big hit into like a, a big level two, level one, if they're low enough for it. But now I think Rock is going to be a really tough character to deal with if Violent Kane starts to go a little more aggressive. <laughs> Jump CD. Been as good as, uh, been as good as any other CD in the game since he's been in the game. Oh, no, didn't get the break confirm, unfortunately, but still almost cleans it up. Oh, no cancel. That's four bars that was there for a chance. Oh, I'm in a DP. I think uh, a little too zesty. I, I appreciate the effort, though. That's one of those things of like, hey, I'll die to a DP. So I'm going to DP you back to catch you out. But Violent Kane's just big chillin'. Yeah. Oh, okay. Big bets. KO 14. We just, <laughs> we just pop in neutral. Oh, right. man, not, not getting You're a chance not... to use any of this, actually. Oh, cross up though. Here we go. This is big. Doesn't get the second uh, finger. Doesn't get the shot because so close to the corner on the left hand side. Had to run up a little bit so they can get so we can get it. 
funny thing is that, you know, honestly, all things considered, that maximum doesn't really matter. That matters, though. The counter hit confirmed from Violet Kane into all of the damage that you could possibly want. Oh, God. Never expected you lose 800 health to a Rock 2C. But here we are, Violent Kane able to take the first game. Oh, I love it. I again, KOF, the little things. It's so good. It's like, yeah, you can combo off counter hit, off heavy buttons if they anti-air, but only for so many frames. But then if you activate your max mode, you could do the super immediately. It's just like, oh, those little things. Recognizing the counter hit, the counter hit showed up, and you're like, bet. That's a. Uh one of those things is like will always feel beyond me as a player but, <laughs> I agree. but is but is one of those things that when i watch top players do it i'm like man that's that's why they're better that's why they're better than other players they have that wherewithal to keep in mind that this is a thing that i could do mm -hmm. oh no no way out with that one so a little bit of damage, but the worst part is you're in this corner. Yeah, just being in the corner versus Gi so difficult. Good trade though. Gives Miguel some room. Okay, getting getting hits. Starting to add up here, getting cutesy with the mix-ups, but the crouch seed's gonna get uh filing Kane some room. But still stuck in this corner, wanna finish the job? Okay, not quite. He needs one more hit. Well, yeah, I'm gonna go for a really, really safe option there. Especially Geese doesn't have a reversal to say uh an exdp i should say going for the exi trigger very very safe option okay good for miguel here hefty lead up against the rock who's a big problem early on let's see i like this co newfound confidence with k but now you gotta deal with violet kane on offense but the character that he sees you see him be more comfortable with oh actually gets advanced strike to work out that time not a lot of damage there but, you know, Advanced Strike does scale quite heavily. Yeah, it's a trade-off, right? So, at the very least, Miguel off in, in a spot. I like him, man, until you get hit by Lumber oh, Run the Climax, and we're going to power relax. up. Relax! Relax! This is unnecessary! No, you have this, this is 100% necessary. No! We need Rock to be at Super Rock, all right? This is now Ascended Rock Howard against two characters. Violent Kane is in the optimal seat. He knew what he had to do. Oh, yeah, it, it, this character in, in powered up mode is so, so good, but we'll see. You have to lab this stuff out. Like this is, he's a different character. You don't just get to play the same rock. And, or if you do, it's kind of worthless for you to spend the, <laughs> for, for, spend the money for the install. Well, so far, looking up for Violent Kane to chase down. I'm in your face. There is no problem here. Gonna get to confirm into the full. I love it. The extra damage just adding up with the OTG as a part of Powered Up Rock. But a hit. It's gonna hit. Confirm. Level one. Okay. Okay. Here we got though. That's safe. Yep. One of the one of the benefits of being in Powered Up mode. Woo! Yeah, I, I I love the answer for the counter was not just to like hit him. It was to uppercut him. <laughs> it was to, to just wait and then just slice right through. <laughs> you got to let him know. You got you to gotta tell them, hey, 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 not enough of that. No, thank you. <laughs> All right, Ryo Sakazaki, anchor time for Violent Kane. One good hit, even off a light. Get rid of however, no problem, but what an answer. Run up the XDP, get that firewall out of here, then I'll just no! mess up. Messed up the Oki situation. The heavy flip is plus on block, so that's why you want to do it in those situations, even if it's massively telegraphed. But you definitely don't want to whiff it all together. Easy punish for Violent Kane going to the anchor characters. All right, Miguel's Hydern, who had some good moments in some previous matches, has a little bit of bar, but I need to see that. I need to see those confirms. I haven't seen that yet from his Hydern yet has not gotten the stinger confirms all the way instead of the oki even if it's against a character like rio where it's hard to really go for those big cross-ups 20 oh. seconds nothing's happened i love it <laughs> yeah no big hits to say no no big confirms and we're on our anchor characters too we're looking to explode the opponent both these characters do have really strong combos with two bars as well 
Yeah, it has just been Nichols and Dive, but the overhead confirm the, the delay cancel, and now we're being taken for a ride here. Oosh. Oh, nice tag. Don't expect the anti throw, especially in that position. <gasps> oh, no, no scale, climax. Though. Yeah, no climax either, but you get some life back. Okay, now you have to save jump. I can't ready for it. Someday people listen to commentary. It's okay. <laughs> it's okay. They can mute, they can mute us for sure. Oh, no! Yeah. That feels so bad! Uh, roll in neutral and you lose for it. You roll a full screen, you lose for it. That feels so bad. Second, but, but putting back Rio on anchor where I think he looked a little bit better. Either way, uh, Masarto going into this one versus Alucard. On the Yashiro versus the Hydrant on point here. You're gonna need it to control. Versus Yashiro is so good at controlling the space in front of him with that far B. Let's see if he gets an opportunity. We'll see. I think like Hydrant, really well equipped. Kind of deal with this kind of character here. These, these jumps are gonna be tricky to do, and then Crouch C is just the money maker. From Hydrant, where like you, your far B from Yashiro is that that quick button. That's very strong to keep people in check. Crouchy from Hyder is just that. And it's also a heavy button too, which is wild. Great block on the cross up. Alucard was trying to get his game <laughs> started, but it wasn't working out. Baserto able to take the first round here. The fact that it, it you block the jump in on one side, then he lands on the other. That's that's uh that's the Hyder family jump C. Yep. Definitely the classic. See if the mirror can prove a little bit better for Al Alucard here. Looks tough. I mean, if you're Basurto, you don't have to overextend. I like you just kind of just chilling. Oh, getting these big punishes. Little misfortune. Yeah, didn't have a lot of meter, so kind of didn't want to spend it on the X Moon Slasher, but it is slower, so definitely more difficult to use as an anti air, and it led to a lot on the side of Basurto. The fact that it's like super strong Oki after it's one thing, but the damage leading up to it is so yeah. consistent and strong. So it's just super good in this character. It's just in control, close D. It is a low, and it is that proximity normal is super good. Same side to, oh gosh. Gonna go for the reset there. Rolling out of that situation. Definitely good to show that you know that the reset is gonna happen. But, oh yash. The reason you put him on the anchor is because he does so much damage with one bar. Can make any comeback with a couple of reads. You gotta worry about that guard oh. bar. Oh, wasn't able to get the catch. Still in a great position there. And that guard bar, still so low, makes Baserto get mad aggressive. And Alucard just constantly trying to find that option that gives him some room, wasn't able to find it, and able to take the first one. Well, probably the, the most dominating performance we've seen so far. Like, Basurdo's hiding with barely a scratch on the spandex. That man is just coming through that super clean. And it's in quick fashion, too. The Alucard Sun's really going to have to sink this through and really just be more mindful. Got to step up the defense and be more careful. But it's, it's again, it's tough because of just, like, the ambiguity of Hydran's pressure and just how good and safe it is. But we've seen how he, Alucard Sun play it before the uh, possibility. Yeah, definitely one of one of those you like just say, hey, got away from me. No big deal. Get back into it. But definitely taking care of Hydrant is the first step here to playing against Borserto. Oh, oh unfortunate. Oh. Armor on the DP, but not fast enough to catch Hydrant's jump and party time started here. <laughs> Stinger just oh! Shooting Yashiro out of the neutral or out of the air. Back Who needs corner. fireball drive rush? We have fireball run up to your face and get a combo. <laughs> oh, committed to it. Looking for anything to get started. Maybe feel a little bit of frustration on Alucard's side. Or Serto looking just as good as he did in the first one. This is interesting to see. I mean, has not really solved the problem that is Baserto's Hydern. Even playing it yourself, it's always tough, right? Because you know what the character can do, but answering it is one thing, right? When it's all as solid as it is in Hydern's kit. 
Yeah, it's not like the characters, you know, smoke and mirrors, right? He's so fundamentally solid, and the mix-up is just genuinely difficult to deal with. So, you just have to play solid, more solid than your opponent. Okay. Nice, gets the anti-air stinger, the armor's there, the pressure, but doesn't get the Stormbringer. Okay, nice. nice. <laughs> Yeah, I can make sure that we finish it off. And one of the nice things about Stormbringer is that even if you have no health, you still get all of the health back from the move. So, and then get out there. Health bar almost fall on the side of Alucard. So, in, honestly, in a pretty good position. Way, be way better position than the first game. Absolutely. It takes a Hydra to beat a Hydra, and uh, Alucard's just feeling more confident now. Got, got the, pro the big problem down. Let's see what the rest can do here, and a jump is going to start in a great fashion. Oh no, actually got the reset with the C. Oh, so unfortunate. Not only losing the meter, but losing all of that pressure. Alucard getting so much health back with the Stormbringers. Oh, no wasn't able to punish the roll. A little bit too early on the 2P. Just shoot the character down. Yeah, level 2. Ensuring that this is, again, recognizing that Al Hydran is finally coming alive. So let's put him back in the dirt and give Berserker the best chance to finish things off here as Andy versus Oyashiro with two bar. Basura's going to be more mindful. You can probably see a lot more jump CDs, jump Ds, preemptive, because at a close enough range, the EX tackle from uh, Oyash is going to breeze through, but doesn't even need it with the jump C cross up. I'm about to say, uh, even with that position, this character does so much damage with one bar that from round start, he was one combo away from dying. That, that previous jump C was almost unnecessary, or sorry, jump D. Uh, and that's why you put him on anchor. That's why he's here. You're literally two combos away from dying with two bars. And I like bars this matchup when Violent Kane's Rio versus this. Run out command grab, caught you deer in the headlights. Level one just for the knockdown, now it's gonna be content in the corner. It does scale quite a bit off of the command grab, so I can understand not wanting to spend it there, especially if you want to keep it for the max mode. But this is also going to scale quite a bit, and you've spent a lot of meter on it, got the cross up. And level one. Oh, not quite, not quite, not quite. That could have been it. Oh, no. no! You're not dead, though. You're not dead, though. Okay, this is not a lot of meter on Basurdo's side. So they're going to need at least two more solid hits, whereas Alucard's son literally just a grab away. And what's better to close out the round than a Yashiro Farby, one of the best in the game, ties it up. We got one more game. Someone came by Alucard's son's room, slapped him backside the head and said, bro, wake up. Come on now. We got work to do. We can't just let Baserto run well on you like that. So we got a competitive match between these two as we're going right back into it. No order switch, no character switch, just violence. Oh, violence. Round That's what I like to see. Okay, there's Annie or Stinger. And already, yeah, Shro in this corner here is Hyder and is just a, a menace. Oh, Storm going here. Back in the corner. Full health once again. Meaty fireball. Oh, nice. Little run forward. Gets the 2B as well. Stay same side. No, thank you. I don't want to deal with this mix though. Oh, not quite okay. Kind of scary when you commit to like the normal cancels, especially when it's an air reset. But works out for Brasurdo. Crouching C. I look like getting a little damage, but the cross chop, the jump C again, doing what it does best. Yeah. Hitting. Alucard wasn't able to get any offense started, even with the 2B. Gets that combo, but was immediately busted out with the EX Moon Slasher. So it's like Busserto just able to get way more out of his character. But Hydra was able to stabilize the game before. Let's see if he can do it again. That damage for one and a half bar, absolutely criminal. Oh, yeah, yeah. bad fireball though. <laughs> Anything you can do. Half your life gone. The resources here, and then the cross up Stormbringer. Give me life back. <laughs> Give me my life back, that is mine. I am taking it back like I'm robbing it from the bank. I'm hanging it to your Wells Fargo account. Getting those funds drained out. 
Sayonara. Oh, both players tossing fireballs and both players eating a lot of damage for it. But Baserto able to one to be on top with the point Hydrin going to the last character in Alucard's team. Let's see if he can do it here. Doesn't have the meter to go through six or three characters, but at least this first character can be dealt with with one combo. Oh no, you stood up again into the reset. Oh God. Oh my God. I Where did my health go? Where is, what? What's going on? Even? Why is the zoning character mauling me? How is this happening? And he's getting his life back. Oh God. Command grab. Last shot here, but the drop. Oh no. Do it again. Yeah, just gonna go for the easier one that time. Empty low. We're, there's a chance. Oh, this, this runs some time out though. Gonna get to finish at 33 seconds, but that's a little scary when every second counts. When you want to make sure you get as much life back as possible, but Alucard Sun is in a pinch. There is a chance. You do have enough meter here to kill with two combos. So we can clean this up quite quickly. However, Berserto doesn't need to do anything. The time is in his favor. Get the punish. Oh. Go in. All right, here we go. You have to make every moment count if you are Alucard Sun. Hard knockdown's gonna set up just to jump over. Nice. Blow back just to get that space back. No! Oh, oh. So. Okay, we're fine. Ooh, nothing afterwards. Trade. Can't take any more of those, but they're in here! Double two. Kill this man. Get him out of here. Oh, is that gonna kill? Yes, okay. Just enough. Just enough. Anti-air anti command grip, surprisingly, does that barely, there's no scaling there. It's like a combo move or a call out. So it leads Alucard's son to their one shot. And if you say there's a chance, there is one as Oh Yashiro's hanging by the thread. But that is like nylon fiber. That's stuff hard to go through. Strings left, holding up for dear life. Oh. Good block. Oh. Yeah, guard cancel. No, get this character off of me. Run up close. D with its fantastic active or uh, activation range, able to use as a footsie tool like that. And Baserta able to stop the comeback at the last second. Scary thing to do, but this character's space control is so good that putting him on point usually benefits good results. And by the way, I should say these two might have the two best sweeps in the game. So. <laughs> another another thing to worry about, uh, especially on point. We'll see how this plays out. I mean, again, Robert, just be careful though, because you, you again, this is just hard. Shadow X preys on you. Like it's not that you're guessing wrong; it's just Shadow X is guessing right, and he has just been in this situation countless times. A little nice back dash. Robert finally yeah. gets a little bit of breathing room, but I mean, like you get a little bit of damage. Now you're running up to a character with like a one frame grab who just wants to hug you. Oh, my gosh. Still had a chance to punish it with the far C, even after whipping the crouch D. Yeah, tried to try to do the same as Shadow. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. I love Shadow. Shadow has done this twice now, where he's like, I'm going to try to tax the opponent's brain. If they get hit by this command grab again, then it's going to hurt her. He did it the same thing with K-Dash and the overheads. All right, big whiff on the Frankensteiner. Mary Shelley's looking displeased here as Robert... Let's get some damage, but the whiff. Uh oh. Yeah, now now we're playing with dealer's money. Just gonna go in, do any mix-up possible that's gonna work out. Plus frames? Yes. A crap of the plus frames. Every fighting game's worth. Every fighting game player is worth nightmare as jump B. Nice kick and Shadow X is just on the ball as always. There's a reason why. Uh... There's a reason why it doesn't happen all that often. People don't <laughs> like playing against a character like this. But that's why I love KOF. Playing grapplers in this game is so much fun. Shadow showing off how much fun it is right now. Rolling with this card. Well, same side though. Maybe anticipated the crossover. Maybe try to challenge. Who knows? Robert will take that to the bank though. Needs one more hit to get this character out of here. Doesn't. Okay, gets a hit. At least after the Frankensteiner. No! Oh, okay! Corner combo. Yes. Oh. No! I like the setup. That was nice. 
<laughs> went for the setup, yeah. I mean, he was in, it's Shadow. He's getting, he's kind of getting, he, he's feeling it a little bit right now. So he's going to put a little extra sauce on his offense. Yeah, so that's, that's, that's the, the, the Vulcan punch, with just a little sprinkling. To get cute with it, and Robert, though, he's still looking in control. Yeah, definitely the character so. to make your comeback. But nice confirm here. That's off, a fa that's off a jump back, right? That's like the fadeaway air to air yeah. into just EX minutes, spike into all that damage. Oh, blackout to get out of the situation. Recognizing that he whiffed it with the trigger, but able to avoid being punished, and that should do it with one more hit. Yeah, getting super active because the guard bar was so low. Only needs a pixel left, and the jump A of all things is going to be able to do it. I love that freeze frame. His fist was like nowhere near her. There was nothing there for that to hit on the way out. Little, little button to do it. Yeah, I, actually, it's one of the other things why I think this character is, is super strong. Taxes the guard bar so safely. Uh, it just makes it really, really difficult to, to make a decision once your guard bar is that low because his corner pressure so strong, able to do it very safely. It makes you force a decision towards the end there. You saw Shadow really preying on it, knowing that Robert's going to get really aggressive on, on defense and try to spend do something to relieve the pressure. And uh, Shadow coming out on top here. Very handed first game in this first to three. A quick thank you to the beautiful Dandy. $13 to the Macharino, taking us to 30 bucks in our prize pool. I thank you so much for your direct contribution to the players. And Shadow X with direct hug to Robert to put him in this corner. Frankensteiner. Yeah, my, my uh, DP is a command grab, is invulnerable. Sure, he's got a lot of recovery. Oh, the drop. Unfortunate. Oh, big drop. Oh, yeah, you like driver. Guilty Gear Air Throw. That was sick. <laughs> Oh, the one punish too! The slash is so punishable! Even a character like Clark, who has to rely on using like the normals up close, was able to run in and finish the job. Robert kind of handed that one on a silver platter back to Shadow. He didn't want anything to do with it. Uh, air to air. Gets the confirm. Toss him towards the corner. Shake my hand. Oh, gonna spend on it. Not quite. Gonna need one more. EX Frankensteiner in the corner. Yeah, seen that one before. Gets away from it, but does not punish it. This is Shadow X just thriving. The air oh. grab again. There is no spot safe from this menace. Oh, you need to clean this Clark up. No. The old pixel health. Wake up super. No, thank you. I am over this. Get this Clark out of here. Shadow X could have killed with Super. It was like, okay, it was close. There was no way to tell, so it's okay, though. The damage is damn done. As Shune is just bleeding from all, every position, right? Cuts all over him, bruised and battered, as K Dash is just flipping around like a magic card, waiting for the chance to flop on top and finish off Shune. This character does get rolling quite hard, so if he gets the opportunity, he can definitely make the comeback here. That's a start. Gets a little punish. Nice roll catch as well. Oh, it goes low that time. We need one more though. Yes! Oh, no! <laughs> oh, I love it. Advancing strike, my beloved. Stopping pretty much anything except for a roll. You see that DP go through, and that's just like what Clark does to you with his armored grab. So it's just giving Shadow a taste of his own medicine. And honestly, Shune, who I thought was down and out, is now up and on the up and up and doing great here. He might have more life than he came into the third round with. Oh, yo, wake up buttons on the scum gale. Didn't work out. Nice rollback. I ain't talking about the net code. It's right now. Shadow X finds uh, the last little hit. Sending Shune pack and getting life back here. But now Robert, honestly, in a comfy spot. I, I think I, I, I'm not, I am very, very happy how far ahead he is with meter and a little bit of life. Wow, gets a cross of 2C of all things. Gets the first hit there, Robert. What's the Oki? Oh, Rob rolls away from the whole situation. Shadow X able to take the better positioning here. Okay. Oh, what an oh. anti here. The cross up 
hitting, getting hit by the crowd C. Level 2 that should be a, close enough to finish it. Let's see what the ender is outside the corner. Oh, I need a little bit more, and the jumpy is just going to be enough. Robert able to tie it up one to one. A critical round from Shanae, basically turning the entire tide of this winner's final set. Could have been a 2 0, now it's a 1 1. Oh, for sure. Stabilizing with the Shune is such, was such a big thing, right? Even if Clark was just destroying him at a point, once you got a little bit going, it was just, I mean, the K wasn't much of a factor. So, like, good, good on uh, Robert for just, again, finding those spots and avoiding big, getting hit by big damage. And that's a, a part of a Shune, right? You have, like, Isla, very mobile, can be very tricky to hit, and they're super momentum heavy. But I will still say, if I'm Robert, I'm not, you know, completely comfortable. Happier than I was a second ago. But the Clark's still a huge problem. And the biggest problem to deal with on Shadow X's team right now. I love it. The, the roll forward was hit by delayed Frankenstein. It's all those command grabs, especially the ones like Frankenstein that have. Ooh, startup frames. Nice neutral jump to beat the wake up throw. Big damage on the side of Robert. Oh, mashing on Rajinkin. In the corner. Ooh, yo. Using the EX EI to, to catch him pressing buttons. Robert deals with the problem. All right. You know what I want to see now? I want to see Robert use some drills. We already got Shadow X blocking. Now we're going to get those double, double, triple overheads. I want to see a little bit of this extra, extra stank on it, especially now that I see this offense from Robert starting to find uh it's placing his game plan until the Iido kicks gets blocked and that close D confirm is gonna be humongous. Has a nice life lead though, so just wanna bet it on something, but doing the big punish here. Nice confirm from Shadow as well. Feels like any hit can turn into big damage for this character. Oh, jump B and that'll do. Finishes the job and Shadow X uh, is, their, is their turn to stabilize. One bad Iido kick on block. Could turn that all the way around. Yeah, definitely doesn't have the the sort of momentum that Shine can put on. But K Dash, just immense control in neutral, definitely has the opportunity to tie this up. Oh no! Spent it on the EX spike. It didn't work out. Back in the corner here. All right, nice hit. Confirm here for Robert. Going to get K-Dash out of there. Now, Robert in full control of this. Look, poised to go up two to one if they can clear Yori. That, that little hesitation, that little bit of a delay in Robert's pressure in the corner there has been so good. Actually won him the entire round versus K-Dash. Definitely a, a thing that you can implement into your own game plan. That slight delay can tell you so much about your opponent. Punish. Block the double wreck of the frame trap. The already classic. This is good. Look at Robert go. Two bar, although it gets anti aired. Nice confirm from Shadow X. It's Yeah, spending it on that EX uh, OTG grab because it gives great Oki. Very consistent. So makes that combo or that, uh, that situation afterwards very, very nice for you. Nice throw, though. Double oh, throw. Here we go. How much we spending here? The art of the shooting, not really much. Just gonna set up the safe pressure, not the safe pressure, but just setting up pressure afterwards. Finds a good hit and Shadow X. Ooh, man, we're down to the anchor battle here in the one of the most important matches you ever see in a first to three round game number three, deciding who takes that lead as both have a point on the board. Yeah, although Isla is sitting there with almost five bars. We are talking about Shadows, Iori. Two bars is all he needs. Nice. E Double fireworks. Big corner confirm here all the way coast to coast. And now guess for games. <gasps> Chases down the roll and that is going to be it. Shadow does a comeback of his own. Able to take that third game and goes up, up in the lead two to one. What a full jump. What a, what a far-reaching jump, right? Didn't have to overextend that jump, but did it enough to catch that back roll. 
And again, it's just, I say it every time. It's not that Robert's guessing wrong. It's just that Shadow X is guessing right. Dude, it's, it's, I'm, I'm telling you, every time I watch this guy play, it's like two bars in the Yori. It's not over. I don't, I don't care what kind of lead you have, but this character does so much damage with two bars. It just takes a couple of hits, two bars, and then it's a one touch situation afterwards. That's why he's so strong in the anchor position. All right, but now back down to the points. I think Robert has the, has had the lead with Ben Amaro those last couple of games, but I mean, it's just Shadow X is Clark. Just needs that one hit to get started. Gets oh, the, oh, the Guilty Gear Eric with a row. Death Lake Driver again just denying the space. Oh, that shit's my coffee, bro. That, that's, <laughs> what, that's what wakes me up in the morning. That's what I look forward to every day. That type of air, air, anti air throws. Oh, and they're slugging it. I mean, this is still. Robert had a lead even after all that, but then one EX tackle into just the hug. Oh, God. And dude, when, when Shadow gets rolling with the Clark, it's a runaway freight train. It's a Mack truck that you cannot stop. And when he's feeling it, he gets going. I feel good about it, though. And now, Shune, though. This has been the moneymaker for Robert. I think Shune has been aces across the board, especially when he gets going. But the danger is Clark has that one bar. Clark has enough life, but the Frankenstein is no good. Nice for Robert reading it out, getting a jump in, jumping ahead, because that is your proper answer to Frankenstein. Yeah, getting a punish this time, which is what I criticized Robert for the previous time he read the Frankenstein and he jumped out of the corner instead of getting a good damage punish. But now we're in that that big turning point from game three, Shine versus K Dash, where Shine got so much more value. Let's see, this is again, this is just one of those matches where they look at their sold it down a little bit until we just throw up the Shatter Strike and say not. Yeah, Shadow Strike, pretty good versus K Dash, just because he often wants to cancel into Ein Triggers, and it's usually either gapless or has a, a big enough gap to Shatter Strike. Nice, it's slow. Robert just, again, even if it's just a little bit, has just kept the life lead, little by little. Gets the jump, more pressure here. Osway with the subscription, thank you so much. Level one, backs away. Nice! Blocks the minute spike, blocks the, the follow up to it, and just gets the finish on Shadow X and Robert now. One character away from going up two to two here, matching Shadow X and taking us to a game five. For how good Clark's looked for Shadow, Robert Shane's look as good. It's it's definitely going down to the wire more often than not because the prowess on both those characters has been so strong. Ooh, dangerous. Super dangerous position here is Robert's trying to keep Shane alive. Again, we find the faint to the low. Connects. Nice roll OS catch. Shadow trying to create some space here. Guard cancel it to take the positioning. That'll do it. Nice cross up one more time. And now Shadow X as the Iori Yagami, the character, the marquee character. No matter how much life, no matter how much meter, Iori will always be a factor with the counter hit crouching C into the anti air. There's the knockdown, there's the safe jump. Now, Robert, it's on Robert right now to make a miracle. Yeah, I'm going to spend it on level one that time. There we go. Set up. Oh, rolls away from it. Wake up throw works out. Oh, gets the cross up. And Shadow able to take it three to one over Robert in your winners of finals. Hell <laughs> yo, Lucas from downtown coming in. I agree. Yo, You're we're picking up bosses though. Yeah. We're all of all things. Character really, really good buffs in the latest patch. So we saw him a little bit more often, but Baserto just constantly going towards those fireball DP characters. This is another one. Okay, nice little hit here as the party's getting started, but the cutter comes out. And then Ooh. the sh advancing strike, we even get the, the zoom in. That's how you know the game's telling you you done messed up. <laughs> A good zoom in Zolu is pretty good in fighting games, but starting off really strong. Oh, Yurikov betting on the DP. That's a throw. Right. 
Throw mode. And then just keep pressuring with those really good buttons. Meets them in the air with jump D. Omega root call, paying off dividends. Takes the first round. All right, now we're gonna deal with the Maiden Kuna. I still have spacing here, but your is always kind of ready. Not afraid to press buttons, especially in situations. I'm not blocking, I can be pressing. Finds a hit, finishes it off, and uh, I buy Rugal. Yeah, unfortunate, because I kind of wanted to see Rugal versus Might and Kun. Being an, uh, uh, not only a good zoner himself, but also an anti-zoner. Could have been a, a quite interesting matchup there. But Baserto showing off the Hydrant again. His character's done so well for him. I love that. With the crouching button, you're still holding crouch so you can get that anti-air. Careful jumping. Yeah, you know Yurikov's waiting. You gave, gave Yurikov the extra space. And uh, is getting punished for it. Oh, throws the Shatter Strike well. And that's going to be the Might and Kuhn from Yurikov. Really running it over. You said it right there. Good to be a little bit patient once you have that advantage positioning in the corner. But you can't be too patient. Giving Yurikov all that time to get out of the corner. Three jump Ds in a row. It's a lot of little hits, but they're going for it. And then finally Yurikov finds the anti-air. Has the corner pressure, gets the punish too. And it is just all the way in, but there we go. Any more juggle. Rio Sakazaki is never down and out. That's not easy either. To know you have to adjust the spacing and run up a little bit forward before the Zanretskin. Great stuff from Baserta. And who needs an anti here? We can parry and then pick any special. It that the parry is special cancelable if you actually successfully parry a move, an attack, and it makes the anti airs of your dreams that you would never be able to get normal. Oh. <laughs> Mary jump normals. Thing of beauty. Ooh, oh, challenge. Oh, oh. The bravery. Yeah, not the best uh, air air button for Rio. Doesn't give you that EX on Retzken that you want, but nice. still good. Nice. Another confirm for Yuri Cobb with the with quick max. Right, level it out with the climax. And one more time. Stay with me, all. Dynamite swing! You didn't say it with me. What a stellar fight! Oh, I was supposed to do? I thought you were talking to, to Chad. Chad can hear me, but like you've been talking to me the entire time. Sorry, Sammy, I get it. It's fine. <laughs> I don't want. I don't want to. Leave me hanging on. You're good. No, 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 no. I just wanted to give you your shine. Like, let it go. You know, belt it out. If we saw it together, it's supposed to be. A, it's a duet. Sammy. All right, all right. It ain't a solo, right. but it's okay. It's all okay. right. Trust me. If you if if we shadow to do uh, a level one super and he does, you know, triples, I I'm gonna I'm gonna yell the whole time. <laughs> You don't understand. The, this is, the, Clark gets me so hyped. <laughs> but uh, I think we still saw the Rugal here. basurto has been pretty confident in changing his order and his teams. And yes, actually, Rio Point. First time we've seen that from Baserto. And uh, going to Rugal second. I actually really like Rugal second. Uh, just because his damage output in the corner is nuts it is one of the best in the game for the meter and uh I'd like to really see it <laughs> what a dp though yeah we still see mate and kun come out instead of the isla remember isla was on point last time that is true so we got that swap and as a uh, year just making the decision uh ha ha you kind of got a little too greedy trying to keep your turn yeah, I think it's time, kind of difficult against Yurikov. He's pretty confident in playing a little bit passive in those, you know, slightly negative situations. Does not mind down backing for a frame longer to let the opponent hang themselves. It worked out right there. You gotta charge, you gotta charge that uh, the flash a little longer, right? Like hold, holding down. Doing something like that against a, a charge character player is always tough. Okay, Shurdo, oh, the reversal actually connects. Oh. And there's no confidence in challenging after the dash punch. Yeah, the follow up, getting people to hesitate. And the DPs are on point. Yurikov actually wasn't showing too many of the anti air DPs before, but this is it. This is why you play the character, the damage. No, 
Oh, you missed the ender. And I whiffed. Nah, never mind. So little recovery in the EX Lunge Punch as now Yurikov is one character away from getting to that Losers Finals, getting into top three, and facing off against Robert. No back dash is allowed. Okay. Good choice here as you're running this corner. It's scary. EX Moon Slasher. Getting Baserto some room. We've seen the prowess for him on this character, so he definitely do it here. But has to deal with the problem, child. I was the one time you pressed. You yeah. finally blocked the rush punch, you're like, this is my time, and then the follow-up. It's definitely the, the, the stressful part about playing against this character. Do it again. Oh, okay, okay. I like that option. It's a little expensive, but at least you get the crossover, you got a little cute with it, and uh, because, like, didn't fully believe that the crouching A would connect, went for like a cute setup afterwards instead of just committing to like a moon slash. Oh, once again. Level three. All right, fight's over, all. Let's go. Dynamite nice. swing. All right, that was better. That was better. I'll, 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 I'll give that a, a, a B. Hey, B's get degrees. Hey. Get degrees. Don't get stung right now as Yurikov is taking a lot of damage though as Hydran does his thing. Crouch C could have been huge, but Magical Arrow is going to connect, pierce the heart, and pierce Pacerdo's chances as he takes fourth place tonight. And Yurikov advances into top three and the loser's final. See? <sighs> but yeah, Benny, Shune, Isla. Interesting here. I mean, you're picking up against the Clark who was dealt with decently against Shadow X. Let's see what Yurikov can do here. Again, it's, he's, he's a, Yurikov's very cerebral, right? Always looking forward to just wanting to grab you up and do everything in his power to do so. Yeah, you said he's TNS's number one grappler. He's showing it off. Picking a character that does it really, really well. Set up. Ah, goes meaty. And there you go. Really, really quick with it is Yuri Clark. Doing a damn good job and showing Yuri again Clark. the momentum, baby. <laughs> I like Yuri Clark. That's good. Yuri Clark, uh, yeah, healthy life lead here. First good read from Robert there on the Frankensteiner. Yeah, I've seen that story before. And uh, just as fast as Yurikov got that game, that, that character down, it seems like Shune is just uh, matching that pace. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't lead to much afterwards, though. Yeah, as you were saying before, it's the same thing we saw with the Shadow X, right? It was like Shadow X's Clark was doing all the heavy lifting on his team, and it was Robert Shanae. Same thing happens this time around. Okay, though. He's the dueling protagonist going for it. Yurikov fighting the first big hit. And now we got some more pressure coming up. I didn't get to quite get the grab that they would hope for, but more pressure with the one, and then just it keeps on moving and grooving. Yeah, one more time. Let's see what the mix-up is afterwards. Nice tries to bait throw. Still recovers in time. Yurikov able to get the hit afterwards. And from one momentum character to the next, Isla taking it out into the mirror. Yeah, great control here for Yurikov. Again, just much, much more offensive. And streamlined offense is super strong. So we get the knockdown. And now just, yep. Gotta guess. Gotta walk. Cool. Yeah. I'm trying to go for this constant reset pressure. It doesn't have a lot of meter to really make this hurt hurt, so just keeping it nice and simple here, but Robert gets a big hit here. Okay situation. What a block on the cut. Make that damage count. Should be able to get rid of the Isa from uh Yurikov here. Oh no, double Woo! DP. Alright, little greedy. A little greedy on Robert's side, but it pays out. And sometimes you're gonna need a little bit of those reads in order to make this comeback. Definitely a tough decision to make when you're this far behind. Do I spend it and make sure that we clean up the character? I'm definitely going to need the meter for later. Bye bye. And, uh, not that like it's going to matter too much here as my Inkun has an easy job. Takes the first game. In this first to three, by the way, I should say, we are in losers finals. Winner will be facing Shadow X, sitting pretty in grand finals winner side. Yeah, just doing what it, Eurocup does best, just finding momentum and maintaining it extremely well. It's going to force Robert to consider 
member selection or order selection they're thinking about it and they're going to go back to the character select screen interesting to see what we might get here as your cup is still locked into their team robert has a choice to pick anyone he wants and is uh, not even pick there's no pre-selected team he is cruising to the character select and hand picking from the finest warriors and that's going to bring the iori out instead of the shune yeah quite surprising if I were to say any character was doing really well for Robert, even in that game alone, I would say it's the Shine. And that's the character that got benched. I don't know how I feel about that, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, we're just going to have to wait and see. It's interesting yeah. to see. Like, I mean, Yurikov is picking the Clark, Robert's going with the Iori, and they're just committing to trying something different. And at least I respect that it's early in the first to three. Right, so okay, my second game, I'm gonna switch to something else. I don't really have, but we can at least see what we can make. It, what we can make work. With it. Yeah, well, you know the the thing, the good thing about Clark is that he plays a, against a lot of the cast in the same way. A lot of the characters' options are so strong that they kind of just work. So, see if uh, Robert's game with the Yori, maybe the offensive prowess of the character is what he's looking for here as it's working out quite well so far another guilty gear throw though and mashing on the oki as well says you're gonna have to earn it and robert proves me wrong takes it the first one with the yori and i think we've seen the i think we see the command hop a little much from yurikov that's a i think the second time this set that they've gone for that and then got punished for it because they're maybe anticipating a rollback but either way, Robert clean hit on the Isla, gets to cross over as Yurikov trying to wake up with buttons. Do they get the anti or wake up throw and paying the price? And then again, oh. that was the lowest cross up. And then a max mode? No! Yeah, Wait. gonna make yes. some of it work out. Yeah, spin it immediately into the level one. So not all is lost. Not what you want it to be, but still gets hefty damage out of it. And Yurikov again, it's like, I'm gonna grab you. I don't care. Chip damage. Oh my god, the last hit of the double axe handle was enough. Calculated from Robert. I actually didn't think that was going to be enough, but it definitely was. And uh, two characters up for Robert. And you're know, you and you're sitting on two bars with Iori on top of which. Let's right. see how oh. much we can get rid of it here. There's one more. But we we'll try to get cute, but good from Robert to just challenge. And then, ooh, spicy from Yurikov, but his hit rate on that is usually pretty good, so not too bad. Yeah, finally gets rid of the Iori. Honestly, if anything, even if I feel like Shinai's done best for Robert beforehand, the Iori just made him so much more aggressive. He was so much more willing to press buttons and be just willing to do something on the defensive end. All right, let's see. There's the bound. There's the damage level two. What do we do there? How much else are we gonna spend on this? Nah, that's it. Hell yeah. Do it again. Do it again. Frames. Looking for it. He Thank did it again. Thank you for listening to me. Thank you, Robert. Someone was listening to the commentators for once, and look at that. You won. See, it works. We know what we're talking about sometimes. Oh man, that's crazy. You know, it's like. No, no, it's like, like, Shine, it's not like Shine's not an aggressive character, right? Like, it, the character is just as, as aggressive, if not more aggressive than Iori, but it's something about how Robert, something in Robert's brain changed when he picked Iori. He's like, he was just like, I, I'm going in. I'm tired of losing. I mean, I Iori is that guy. Iori is the K is the KOF character. He is who you fall back on when you're having a hard time. Iori's got a nice a beer for you. He's got an ear to listen, and he's gonna play your favorite music and make your day better. And look at that. It's co he's coming through for Robert right now. As Yurikov now has to answer back as things are tied one to one. Yeah, and uh, an order switch. From yeah, Robert, sure. He, he's running through the list in the, you know, it's a good list because they're all good characters. <laughs> you know, Yashiro, Clark, Blue Mary, all very, very strong characters, but definitely swapping it out. Mike Kun on point now versus the Betty Mara. Rolls away. 
And again, uh, the the point might and Kuhn has just been an ace. There's no whiffing here. You hear, oh, wow, wow, that character just does not care. <laughs> that command run is just hilarious. Yeah. Especially against good players, uh, very hard to make a read on when they're going to do the run and uh, confirm for Yurikov. Able to take the first round here. Interesting to see why it, Robert's decision making is, is is really befuddling me. I feel like part of the reason why he felt like he was so good was the point Yori. But I, I, I cannot be the one to make his decision making for him because it worked out last time. Let's see if it works out this time. Yeah. Ooh, crossover. I like that. Gets a throw. I'm anticipating the reversal. No punish. Sure, Yurikov uses up the bar, but it's like, whatever. I'll get that back, no problem. Nice. Sees him in the air. Gonna cash out a little bit for the with the meter. Make that DP hurt a little bit more. Right. Really committing to these double jumps. Really wants to bait out the reversals from Yurikov. And just, Yurikov, yeah, sure, not biting. But it's like there's only so much you can do against Isla kind of just floating in front of you. Let's see how the Yashiro works out. Super good character, does a lot of damage with two EXs. I let Robert immediately press far C in that like small gap, but then Yurikov hits the frame trap. There's some damage here, but the roll away, no problem. Yeah, walked back for the throw bait setup, but got the roll instead from Robert. Doesn't fully commit to it. Roll with the crossover, full confirm. An unfortunate whiff into the full jump in. Ay, ay, ay. Went for a different mix up that time. Yurikov was not ready for it. And Robert doing it with the Isla into the mirror here. Okay, so Robert go. a little bit more aware. All right, which is which? Your guess is mine. Is they're just trading places? No one knows. Ooh. The throw. Robert's in control again. Oh, get the hit! But then go all the way in. <laughs> this is so tricky. Like, you, you close your eyes, chat for like two seconds, open them, and see, see if you can guess who's who. <laughs> They're just jockeying for this corner position, constantly trying to jump over. Finally, back into the middle of the screen here, but guard cancel. Trying to relieve some of the pressure. Nice low check. Should be enough to punish her. Level one. Let's see what we're gonna go with. Level... No, doesn't get the knockdown, but advancing strike time. Pressed on it too. Oh, I love the blocks! Those blocks were the best blocks I've ever seen. Someone give Robert a bouquet because not only did he block the shatter strike, and then say I could punish this. But just blocked and blocked a DP as Yurikov like rolled through the motions, right? If I'm not gonna get punished, I might as well go for a reversal. Cause if the reversal might hit them if they mistime it, but then Robert's like, nah, I'm chilling. I love it. So uh, Robert feels very, very comfortable in that post advanced strength position. Like way more than I feel like I've seen other players are. Definitely it's not something that everybody's implementing tremendously, but it is definitely something that I that through this set I've seen Robert been really good at. As we get another order change from Robert responding to whatever Yurikov wants to do here and putting the Yori on point again. We are just flipping everybody. It is Robert is at the table. He's got three cups and he's telling you where's the ball gonna be. You gotta pay attention. He's just slide a hand and you were guessing where's Yori gonna go. Oh, bet it on the DP here. Set up. Yeah, just gonna go high. All right, Doshta, Doshta. Here we go. And now, but Robert getting some hits. Matching the energy here and trying to just tie things up with the life lead. Nice, no counter hit. But trying to keep that positioning. Yurikov gets out of the corner, switches it up. Boom. Well done, okay. Yori down. So getting the swap to the start just to fall pretty relatively quickly. Your cop could ask for a better start for this, but Isla was the moneymaker for Robert and she's waiting on the anchor to hold things down. Yeah, I can no longer say anything about Robert's decision making with characters or order because it feels like no matter what, finds a way to make it work. Benny, however, been a little bit quiet though. 
So we'll see. That run under was wild, but you know what? We just eat idle kicks. I have a Rekka. I'm gonna throw it out. Whatever. Oh. Try to reach, but nothing was there. Yurikov gets a good punish here. EXDP busts out of the mix-up situation. Oh, and this takes Captain Falcon coming through out for a quick knee to finish off that gate that round. And please kick Robert getting something going here, but I love this Mind Coon as always. Not gonna be at the start here, but it's got some bar and has always been a threat. And it was the Betamaro versus Mind Coon that went in Yurikov's favor. Oh, just goes for the 2A afterwards. Thought he could still use that sweep to keep Yurikov in check, but it doesn't work out that time. Takes that third round very handily and gives himself a nice life lead. All right, so now Isla is back once more. The shining star for Robert. Tries to get a throw, but Yurikov's not going to let those throws happen so easily. Yeah, nice tech really looking for that moment that moment that opens up Isil's pressure here especially with four bars taxing that guard bar though gonna make yeah make your call have to make some decisions it's working out for robert yeah third throw in a row getting teched no problems here roll back oh went for the aye, 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 but he's got the hit and it should be a super cancel yeah all this damage Gonna stick, especially after this 30 seconds. You lose a lot of health gain possibility. Oh no, wanted that earlier. Didn't get either the, the double crouch B, and your cops just like, you know what, run that clock. Whatever. Oh, hurts to lose those two bars, but you are Isla. You just need a couple mix ups. And spend another level one. No problem. Spray can, DP, and Sayonara. And now Robert is alive with the, these threads have been holding up so long for so many players. It is amazing how much people are managing to stay alive here. Yeah, you'd like to have those two bars back, but honestly, any all things considered, Isla in a pretty good position just with the two bars that they have right here. Just jump in B. Nice and simple. Max mode confirmed. Cleans it up for Yurikov. As we've seen again, we are tying up the game count two to two. Yeah, super job. But now this is a commitment. Yurikov is locked in for Blue Mary. And then Robert can say, ha 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 ha. Once more, back into the refrigerator, deciding what does he want? The Sunny D? Did he want the purple stuff? It's going to go with the Shune stuff. As we're back to where we started. For Robert. <laughs> we did a lap around the block, but we're back at home again, playing the character team that uh, brought him to the dance. So we'll see how this one plays out. And Shine on point, on top of which. All right. And it's going to be Shune versus the Isla, dueling protagonists, to kick things off for our final game of the set. Who will get to grand finals to fight Shadow X? TNS Yurikov or Roberto? Let's go. A lot of moving around. Both characters are very proficient in the air. So you'll see them up there quite often. Oh, what a hit. And then a block perfectly well from Robert. Going to get max damage off of that into more just pressure. And it's just adding up. Oh. Resetting time and time again, keeping the aggression going. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. Crossover connects, a little bit of damage, and now we're extending it. Oh, oh, no. Yeah, get him out of here. And what was a great round for Robert again? Just turned around because that god cross up from Isla is just so difficult to just control and expect time and time again. So Yurikov just in a good spot here, but Robert getting his, getting his licks. Oh, yeah, I guess a big opening here, especially pushing towards the corner. No, was too high for the super to fully confirm. But all things considered, it was the same. Got the hit afterwards. So cleaned up the Isla quite quickly. Didn't let her get too 
too far ahead. An important match between Mayan Kun and Isla as Yurikov needs to get her out of here expeditiously and is rushing her the heck down, but a DB confirmed into a run-up throw, and now Robert's back at it. Looking for some sort of reversal option from Yurikov. Didn't get it. Shoved towards the corner, though. There's the escape. Counter hit. It's all good. And then, yeah, no double jump that time. Yurikov takes it to the bank. It's basically, just floating in front of him is just not good enough. You really have to commit to a double jump or another option there to avoid bait being blown up. And now it's all down to Ben Amaru here for Robert. No punish on the shoulder check. Yeah, critical round for Robert, especially considering I don't feel like I've seen the Benny Maru do the work it needs to do versus Yurikov. Gets an air throw. Get thrown back in the corner, though. Not a good look for Robert. And here we go. It's time for Awawa into mix-ups. Oh, hits out of the air kicks. Pressure, though. Also taxing the guard bar. Something to worry about. Nade Robert make that decision. Spent all of that extra quick max meter on some EX slashes. That should be it. Level one OTG will do and Yurikov with the three to two, eliminating Robert at third place. And Yurikov is now in the grand finals as Mayton Kuhn does what he does best, makes their opponents second guess their offense, their pressure, and show the amount of respect that Yurikov can just take that back at you, grind it into the grind it into the dust. Second, and the Iori, the uh, the 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 anchor staying puts in that last position. All right, here we go. The young sleepy boy trying to make something happen here versus the K dash. So Clark is chilling in the second spot, and I like this answer here. As K Dash won't be able to go to those jump B's or jumps, uh, CDs or any of those jump ins against Yurikov, who's always kind of ready for those. And you also don't get the luxury of having a one frame grab against the dash punch, which will always be able to guarantee a punish on it. Letting Yurikov be able to just pressure as they like. Oh, gonna spend the level one. Blackout to get back into the corner. Oh. Nice hit. Good call out. Yeah, great read on the iron there and punished it with the lunge. But did a lot of taxing, didn't get that much life back. So definitely just a little bit of a lifeline here here for Shadow to clean up. He's gonna need one more. Thank you, Steiner, but it's fine. Actually gets a little bit of bar from that and then the tackle will get him out of here. I love that, like the first pillow gets thrown, right? Shadow X jumps at it and says, oh crap, I can't actually punish you with this jump in. Doesn't even press a jumping button, just lands and gets the grab because like, okay, fine. You're gonna be blocked. I got you. He's just, it's always like split second decision making. It's fantastic. Oh my God, like that. What oh. the hell? Goes low. In the corner too. Set up. Yes. Throws the thrower. Goes low again. And just getting busted. Level I two. I like it. What are you? The scaling is so dumb. Finish. <laughs> I told you I'd do it. I, I know you did. I, I felt, felt good. It felt good. <laughs> it's just, I just get sad looking at the scaling. His command grab in the super does nothing. What, if it but it did does enough. Damage, if I it know. did damage, no he thank you. you. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, crazy times. As Clark is running wild, but Isla is uh, crazy, crazy enough to, to match up. Nice punish. Got any one more? Nice. And nice from Makoto Fox, our resident Uni Two specialist with the 66 person raid. Welcome to the finale of KOF 15. You're in for a treat as we have Grand Blue and Uni Two coming up after and later today. Wait a minute though. Got the Shadow Iori. Just because he's at a meter deficit doesn't mean much. Not for this guy. All right, chopping out those lows. So Shadow X ready for it. Gets fully jumped in, box across it though. Double cross oh. it. And then the nice Shadow. Blocks. No confirm though. 
No, oh, he just got jumped in on, but it's okay. Punish. Ooh. That's huge. Yeah, it's gonna all... be easy. Oh, level one. I think they were hoping for like maybe a. Well, that's fine. What are they hoping for? They got the punish. Doesn't matter. They got it. Does that do DDP? Level two, level three. Well, even if they did level two there, they have to do it earlier because the the quick max is such is, is lower, right? Because when they did the level one, they ran out immediately More. of the timer. Sure, it's weird. Yeah, it's fine. Whatever. It, it, see, Honestly, it's weird because the character depends on a follow up, right, to the super. So doing like that into level two, yeah, level, like level two, level three, it's, it's funky, right? So it's, I like the decision. It it killed, so it doesn't matter, right? What are we talking about? At least it, for later on, you can think about it, right? I can talk about this all day. Absolutely. Yuri Hop able to take the first round or the first game here in his long journey in the bracket. It's going to need two first to threes in order to take it over Shadow X, who's sitting on winner's side. And attack. This pressure's coming through. And just, yeah, here we go. Yeah, this is main, the Might and Kun special. All of the armor wake up. Then it spiked. I, I love it. I feel like that's the first time it's worked out for Shadow X. I feel like almost every other time EX Minute Spike for Wake Up has been punished. Nice. And make sure we, we're making sure it's finished, right? We're not pulling any punches here. You don't let Shadow X live with a fraction of, of, of life at all. Yeah, make sure not to get too greedy, especially with this life lead. You make that meter back up quite quickly, but. <laughs> Oh, you're approaching me? <laughs> oh, you hit me? Uh, nice. <laughs> you you fall into my trap of being right next to me. <laughs> <laughs> Never leave Clark standing. Never leave Clark standing. That's the lesson you all have to take today. If anything you learn from today's stream is never leave Clark standing. Oh, man. That was great. But grip presence of mind, obviously, you know, doesn't put uh, Might and Kun in an advantageous position, so have that on back ready to go. But you don't want to get this character started, not on Shadow's side. We saw, we saw that in game one of Clark just really going, going to town. And it gets a small punish. I love the presence of mind, go for the command grab, and to just. Oh, and to getting hit by Crouch B. Very nice. Very confirmed there. Level three? You gonna do this one? No, I'm good for now. Okay, sounds good. I'm gonna save it for when, like it later on when it really matters. Oh, nice close C, but no combo. Slap him up. Oh, oh no, the confirm! Nice that good. was so good. Super. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Woo! That was just the most delayed cancel, but that's the recognition. Shadow X saw it hit. Didn't like commit to continuing it until he recognized. Oh hell yeah, I love that. Yeah, definitely tough stuff there. That's uh, need a lot of hours in order to get that stuff down. Close away. I'm trying to see how much extra credit he can get here, especially considering you would like to build some meter for his anchor character Yuri Kopp. Not gonna give him the opportunity. But he's almost at that threshold, that wonderful moment where Iori becomes a, an almost a one-touch character, getting that two bars. Oh my run up crowd C. No counter hit though, so the records don't work out with the roll away. Here we go. Nice jump. Perfect timing. You're caught ready for the situations. Gets to grab. But the wake up throw. Oh my god. <gasps> yeah, looking for that hit. A little bit too far. Very hard to punish Isla Shatter Strike because of the range that it uh it activates up. It's huge. There's those two bars. EX uh, fireworks is ready to go. It's yeah. Explosive with the jumping. Wait a minute. Not much good spend. Level one. You're in the corner here. Mm. All right. Guess your game. Nice tack. Oh, anti air. Guard cancel. Put him back in the corner. Another great tech. Inner air jump. Any of all things. Mashing the throw on the landing, and it works out for Yuri Kov. Able to take it and extend the lead 2-0. to zero. All right, Yuri Kov playing. 
really well here. Their callouts on defense have been working good. Because, again, their commitment to going for grabs ensures that they don't get grabbed. Because that's how you tech in this game, is throwing your opponent. So it's 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 so hard to throw Yurikov with a regular throw because they're always ready to get grabs on their end. So it just snaps away. Even if uh, Shadow X is breaking the grabs, it it just it's Yurikov's just in that comfortable spot in those situations, in those like crazy techs. And they're looking good here, but it's not easy because it's not over. There's still one more game to go to get a reset, and then there's a whole other set against Shadow X. Yeah, definitely a lot of work to be done for Yurikov, especially versus Shadow X. The momentum of a set can turn on a dime. But Yurikov has gotten the best of K Dash more often than not. Definitely making it harder for Shadow X to take these games. And continuing to go for it, there's the ow, 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 because there's, again, if, as long as the, the, the run, the command run does not hit, Maiden Coon pretty much is like safe to do whatever the hell he wants. There you go. You know it's coming. There's like three seconds where a Maiden Coon is just sitting full screen. It, it's gonna punch you to bits. That feeling in your gut lunge punch that makes the best Might and Kun players feels the worst for their opponents. The XDP gets a little bit extra with the lunge punch. Oh, guard bar getting taxed. Shadow X is going to have to do something. Oh, try to command grab. Try to make it so, hey, you were close enough, but the spacing from Yurikov and the awareness to just jump away. Not letting Shadow X be able to autopilot defense here. Oh, oh. Maybe miss the EX? Uh oh, maybe it was too late? Really unsure what happened, unfortunately, there. Able to clean it up on block, and Might and Kuhn almost more health than he was before. But oh, here we go. Yori. We'll see. It's a Yori having to deal with every character. Wake up putting Yurikov again has nothing to lose here has all the characters in the world to play with no big deal the combo cancel i love that very nice gonna spend a little bit extra main coon is gonna finish the job we have a reset as yurikov challenges the overhead with again zero fear there with like the delayed button press and just saying there is no time for blocking. There's time for fighting here as we got another set here, but Yurikov in a commanding 3-0 win for that reset. Yeah, very, very strong. Relax. <laughs> Yurikov ready to get back into it. Yeah, with a lot of momentum on his side, obviously doing it with the OCV with the Might and Kun. And uh, we'll see if Shadow goes back to the previous order that he played in Winner's Finals. Maybe saw a little bit more success, and indeed, you shall see that. Definitely, I think the biggest problem is not that Iori and Clark weren't doing enough work, but that K-Dash felt like a liability on his team almost. Like, I don't feel like he had won any round versus Might and Kuhn. And uh, or even if he did, it didn't feel like it was that, like, it didn't give him like a healthy life lead or anything like that. So maybe with a little bit more meter, going to feel a little bit more comfortable, or maybe just with Clark, who he's felt a little bit stronger on, can give his team a little bit more of a lead and uh, and give his K-Dash a little bit more leeway. Or maybe it just deals with this Might and Kun. I don't know. This character has been such a problem for Shadow in this set so far. Well, it's Clark to start things, so K is getting put back. All right, he's got on the bench to turn things off. A fresh set to gr to crown our champion here as Yurikov is full steam ahead. They're in their comfort zone. Their reads are right. Their defense Whoa. is splendid, and their offense is just so hard to deal with. But the tackle is going to give Clark the one chance to get things going. But hesitated for a second there. Punish. There it is. Impeccable selection on that jump B. Perfect normal for the perfect situation. But Yurikov not letting him get any of that momentum started. Oh, the double Frankensteiner catch the landing. And there's the minute. low. This should be enough to finish. Oh. Oh. I, too soon. I love that from Shadow X. Saw Yurikov jump back in the corner and just like, 
what goes up must come down. There's no way you're jumping twice. It was <laughs> rough. All right, Clark did the job. And then empty jump command grab, because you're worried about all those great buttons, oh! and then they snatch again. There's no dodging He's gonna in baseball. Do it again. He's going to do it again. Oh. Oh, yeah. Once you get into this point versus Clark, you're just like guessing everything in your head. 2B max mode just wants to get rid of the character, but I like a decision. It's expensive, but he's going to get the full 300 health back. Man, just recognizing that Shadow X ain't gonna block, or Shadow X not gonna block that low. Your Carver, you made fun block, would have committed to it, but the full distance round start trigger, and then magical arrow on wake up because your Carver just wants to get that turn back. Jump back D, just gaining some space. Also throwing out a hitbox in front of him, but your Carver with a confirm. Right. Great damage there, and still in the corner here, forcing it, but the jump back, no command grab for you. Screen confirmed. No one doesn't like Shadow X. Oh. Yeah, it's kind of the weird thing about this character is that he's actually happier shoving EXs into his combos over supers. Uh, and that was just like the perfect combo right there. Great stuff from Shadow X. The dude plays Pong with, by himself. <laughs> yeah. It's great. And then big hit. Here we go. Gets a cross D, didn't combo it. Shadow X was in a tough spot, not really ready for the situation. But this should be enough here. Oh, just enough with the XDP. Shadow finally stems the bleeding after three straight in the losers, or the, the winner's final set, sorry, grand finals winner's side set. Uh, once the resets turned around, able to take the first game of this new one. Yeah, I mean, Clark did what he had to do. I mean, if you get rid of Mike and Kuna, Things get a little bit better, and now it's gonna we're gonna have the guessing game. It's time to get those cups and swing them around. <laughs> Where's Mitten Kun going, Sammy? Anchor. That's my guess. Ah, oh, you lose. Uh, That's ten bucks. Ten bucks. It, th th this this cup game is, is no joke. All right, yeah, we gotta take you to New York more often. I, right? I'm <laughs> that dude in the street is gonna want more than ten bucks. I promise you that. Oh God! If I'm going to New York, I'm I'm already broke as it is. Have you seen plane ticket costs? I what, what ten bucks do I have now? I haven't seen plane ticket costs. I'm staying my butt home and going to Texas <laughs> Showdown next week. I'm fine. <laughs> uh, looking forward to that. So we get into this one, game two here of this grand finals reset. Things chained up for Yurikov, putting a lead, uh, Isla on point. All right, we'll see. I mean, already getting some getting some damage here, but it's Clark. It's Shadow X's Clark. He just wants to tap, tap, one hit, one tap, and then it's just everything is going crazy. Yeah, just looking for that thing that starts his game plan up. And yes, Scavenger, oh, cool. there is Grand Blue right after this Grand Finals. Nice. Set up. Oh, no tech. Messing up the... The Oki a little bit for Shadow. Jump D. A dead kick in the face. <clears throat> and now we just have to guess. Yeah, I expected a DP there. Nice. All right, get there where you can. That's always really nice. Your Cobb's going to be able to set up some nice pressure here. They both just roll away. Challenge two, but the DP even better. The command grab. Oh, what an answer. Uh, both are Again. so aggressive on, on Oki. How many times do I gotta say it, Sammy? It's not that Yurikov guessed wrong, it's just Shadow X guessed right. It, it, it keeps happening. Uh, that is a way you could put it, for sure. <laughs> Alright, bye bye. It's like, it's like it's not, there, it's, it's never bad options from Yurikov. It's never wrong options, it's just Shadow X just has an answer to those options. No, rarely do these players make bad decisions it's usually they're making reads on one another sometimes you're right sometimes you're wrong shadow just making really really good decisions in those tense situations but once again one of the things that we saw from that first win from shadow x is k dash finally getting the groove going what a dp stop the, the multi kicks actually shutting it down that's crazy but Yurikov wakes up with it. Oh, 
Zuzu. Keeps it safe. Life lead here for your cuff. Nice answer. Whoa. The OS throw, but the throw back to you. Very Overhead. nice. Bye bye. Great response also from Shadow. Again, the K Dash finally putting some marks on the board. There we go, man. That was a big one. Again, that's been the the, the, the hard character to the counter, really. You know? Ooh, what a block. Perfect. Simple from Yurikov. And now here we go. Anchor fight. Yurikov needs this. Needs this. Iori to go down needs this point on the board. Cannot let Shadow X go up 2 0. Definitely a tense situation here, especially with how good Shadow's been on the Iori. Oh, no, didn't punish it. He's afraid of the third Rekka. Anti air once again. All right, in and out. Okay, talk about the restaurant. Nice pressure here from Shadow X. Yurikov answering. Oh boy, this is getting spooky. Gets a hit! Ooh. Nice! You did not block low on the plus frames. Reset? Reset? Yeah. <gasps> oh! That was huge. Yeah, expecting it to use it as an anti air, so it wasn't ready for the confirm itself. 2B! Confirm! Sparklers! Gonna go into. Yep. What's the setup? Game. There's the space though. I love it, and then just pump it in. <gasps> what? Pulled a Yurikov. He just said, I'm going in for the grab. This is time. Every every Guilty Gear Kai player, every every person that ever dreamed of just like, F it, we ball. My man ran up for the grab from downtown. I was like so surprised he did fireball, meaty fireball, which is something you'll see sometimes. But, like, he's been so good in that mix-up pressure, post-super, post, like, oh, EXOTG grab and stuff like that. I was like, oh, what's he going to do here? And then he did nothing. And then he did everything afterwards. He just said, like, I'm tired of waiting. It's like, wait a minute. We're, we're not playing neutral here. No, let's go to game three. He just grabbed Yurikov and showed him the door to game number three here in this set. So it's now two up for Shadow X. One game away from being crowned your champion here at Tampa Never Sleeps for this fine, fine Saturday. Can Yurikov weather the storm or will he get tossed around and ragdolled out, out of the tournament at second? Oh no, help. Oh, Sarge jumps away, gets a minimal punish as well though, but something. Oh no. Is Shadow X kind of feeling it? Because he's playing like he's feeling it. Here we go though, wait a minute. There's a knockdown. A little something. Adds up. And just how the tide turned as soon as Yurikov got the corner situation, I was able to put on that you know, just great safe pressure. Yeah. Yurikov just playing with all that space behind him, so willing to backdash. Well, Shadow Onyx does definitely, it's playing with that patience necessary versus this character. Didn't get that Frankenstein to work out. Oh, doesn't use the meter to confirm that jump B. There's the anti air. Send him down. Just keep this nice and safe. Beautiful. Well done. Yeah, a lot of calm play from Yurikov there. Could have gotten away from him, but after he got out of the corner, understood that he just needed to play patient, ask Shadow to make a mistake coming in. A lot of solid play there. Trying to put himself on the board in this uh, grand finals reset. Took the first one 3 to 0. Has yet to find a win here in the reset. Finally, it gets blocked out. The follow-up, but the drop combo. And then now, yeah, we're just gonna charge right through, break down the door, and just try to keep uh, K Dash in the spot. Oh, whoa! Definitely the tests for Shadow right now. Oh, yeah. Gotta make sure he's done and dusted. And hey, yeah, pull the trigger on that full jump. Like Yurikov went all the way in, but like you can't. Like Shadow X scouted it out. You don't give him a safe jump. He is 100. He was just 100 ready for it. Gets the anywhere juggle out the gate, and here's this damage to kick things off. Doesn't have any meter afterwards though, so taxing the guard bar now. Something K Dash oh. is super good at. Oh no! Gives up the corner positioning too. Level one, level three. All right, 
fight's not quite over, but the damage is nice. As we get the dynamite swing! The fans off. Empty throw. Then oh! gets denied! Are we, wait, Grand Blue started already? <laughs> did we, did we, did we, we're dodging the brave counters and getting a punish? Dang, we, 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 where's uh, Zip and uh, Osti? Hold on. <laughs> uh, not here just yet, but you'll see it in just a moment. Getting a little bit of a preview of what's to come. Blue Mary showing off the tech here. And we're going right back at you. You're not the only one with that cute stuff. First time we've seen that, actually. From Yurikov, he's had a lot of options or a lot of times he is able to do that, but doesn't go for that anywhere juggle often. I see Yurikov pumping, but gets counter hit. That's gonna let Shadow X get the finish here, level one to OTG. Woo! Yeah, nice cleanup for Shadow. Definitely a big issue here, though, is that he's going into this final round without any meter. Uh, doesn't even have an EX, so gonna have to play solid. Find that meter first. Out of there, I love that. Whiff canceling. Just get that space. Last character here for Yurikov. The whip punish. Small dead zone into the cross up. Oh, we're getting, we're getting grimy. Sam, we're getting grimy. Uses it there. Safe jump setup. Oh, goes for the cross up. And that is it. Shadow X able to take it. Three to zero over Yurikov. And it's going to be your TNS KOF champion. Congratulations! A 3 0 to match the 3 0. And the playing off so, so well.